reporters about his roommate's frequent trips to his nearby hometown of Terre Haute, Indiana. Every week since we got here, it seems like every time I ask him if he wants to hang out on Friday, he has some wedding or birthday party or something. In fact, I'm pretty sure he hasn't spent a single Friday or Saturday night on campus in the past six months. Plotnik went on to cite a variety of far-ranging excuses used by his roommate to justify his constant visits home, including various family functions, a visiting friend from China, as well as his occasional desire to, quote, just hang out at home for a couple of days. I mean, I suppose I vaguely understood when he had to go back in November because his best friend's grandfather died, but last weekend he had to go back for his aunt and uncle's wedding anniversary. He said he couldn't miss it. This is the Onion News Network. Talk Live. You can join us here, and you can join us via the phones or via Skype. The us in the studio tonight includes me, Ian, and Conan, and Mark. And of course, uh, you can also join us online. Just drop on by freetalklive.com, where you can actually control the content of the website, submit stuff to it. Other listeners can vote it up or down, whether they like or dislike. Mark, you and I happen to have uh, the same story in our show prep piles for tonight. And mine comes from the Free Thought Project. Is that where yours is? Yeah, mine too. Why don't you go for that? Yeah, from the Free Thought Project, Little Rock, Arkansas, Arkansas Governor Mike Beebe recently announced that he's planning to pardon his own son for a drug charge that he received over a decade ago. Oh, mm-hmm. that's awfully that, generous of that's him. It's great to be a governor's son. The governor's son, Kyle Beebe, was arrested for possession of marijuana with intent to deliver and was later convicted for the offense, but avoided jail time by completing three years of probation and paying over $1,000 in, in fines. That's pretty sweet. I wonder how many other people would get that kind of uh, plea deal, if you will. Well, I don't know. I couldn't say what uh, what the rega- what it was regarding the plea deal, but I can tell you that pardons are rarely given out. So, um, you know, it's who you know in many cases when it comes to pardons, and mm-hmm. there's lots of lawyers that make lots of money essentially uh, funneling uh, pardons in front of governors. And so once he's pardoned, he'll no longer be a felon, right? Uh, that's exactly right. Yeah. At the time of the arrest, the governor, who was uh, then the state attorney general, said that his son would not receive any <laughs> special treatment because of his family's political affiliations. No. Now the not. governor is saying that he would have— uh, pardoned his son much sooner if only he had asked and if the family wasn't so embarrassed about the arrest oh so he would have pardoned his son had his son asked him sooner yeah right gotcha and uh, you know i mean essentially once he's done with whatever the, whatever the sentence is i sort of believe that um, ultimately what's the point in someone carrying around a conviction or whatever in many cases uh people do need pardons after a period of time. It seems like they should be automatic. Yeah, people deserve a second chance, I think, especially if they are trying to make their lives better and you know don't immediately return to a life of criminal activity once they get out. But what if you compare it to, say, maybe uh, credit, credit rankings? If you have bank, gone bankrupt sometime in your past and you've cleared your name, so what is it, seven years or something yeah, like that? Yeah, that's the idea, seven years, but it can, it can show up longer, uh, but you sort of have to police your own uh, credit rating in order to make sure that that seven years is... Uh, I think it should be it. very similar. I mean, look, you've you've served your sentence, you've you've done your, your time, and, uh, you, and, and then you've kept your nose clean for however long. Yeah, second chance all the way, but I mean... You know, carrying carrying the 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 title around with you for the rest of your life, it's it's just it's a ball and chain. I mean, it's absolutely an albatross around someone's neck. I just encountered a guy who actually was apparently a drug dealer in Washington D.C. He came out or he came up to the porch here at the LRN.FM studio a few days ago, and he told me about what happened with him in a local park where the police arrested him for basically telling off the cops. And he's asked me to not reveal much more about the case until he's ready to publicize it. But, you know, this guy's had his his life ruined. That's what he told me, that the drug dealing charge out of uh, Virginia that he got for selling, you know, whatever to people on Capitol Hill, uh, basically, has essentially 
made it so he was working in you know these sort of DC the DC offices or whatever different organizations there. And now he's like a jockey in a car shop. Yeah, and if it's and it's not just him that is has his his life been ruined. It's I mean anyone close to him, his family members. Uh, I mean, you know, anyone close to him could be affected as well. I mean, maybe he has child support checks that he's supposed to be paying, and guess what? He can't do that now. Can't make the payments because he can't get as good of a job. I can tell you as a felon um, that I currently cannot vote in the state of Florida, nor can I own a, a firearm anywhere in the United States. Different states have different rules as to precisely what weapons I can own, but I can't have a firearm as defined by the DEA. Um, excuse me, not the DEA, the, uh, uh, what's the ATF. Okay. And, um, I cannot have, uh, I cannot vote in the state of Florida where, which is my home state. How many states will allow you to vote as a felon? Most. Okay. Um, but honestly, it just doesn't make much sense to me. Um, having gone through this, this whole process, I can see why you might not want uh, somebody in prison voting. There are states where people in prison can vote. Now, they vote absentee. Otherwise, you would have, a like, many times these big towns that have a prison in them, they would be the largest voting block, right? Mm-hmm. Like, so it doesn't make any sense to have the convicts <laughs> voting um, in their uh, in the, the place where they um, are currently residing because if you, say, live in a town of 200 free people uh, who are mostly prison guards, and these places exist, yep. and— 1,500 inmates, the 1,500 inmates will elect whom they wish to be the mayor and these sorts of things. <laughs> that sounds like fun. That sounds like it might actually be a good idea. Yeah. Now, um, you know, I mean, I can, you, your state can pick, I don't care whether or not uh, convicts uh, vote from prison or anything like that. Um, and maybe even you say, look, you don't get to vote for a year after you get off of, or maybe you can't vote on probation or a year after probation mm-hmm. or something like That's that. That's how it is around here, I think. I don't know what the rules are yeah. um, in every state, but they, they do differ. But it seems to me that it would just be easiest for everybody if a blanket pardon was handed out to people, you know, five years after they completed all, um, you know, all of their whatever it is for their sentences. Whoever it is that has uncontrollable urges to commit crimes is probably not going to be able to make it five, five years, years, right? Yeah. And if they do, then you only have the legal system to snatch them up again. The fact that they mm. own... Um, a firearm legally, the you know, right now, every ex-convict in America can go get a gun and they can do it relatively easy. You aren't stopping them. Uh, you know, Craigslist and uh, all kinds of uh, Facebook groups and yeah. there's all kinds of ways to get guns. You're not stopping me from getting a gun. The only thing you're stopping me from doing is doing it legally and therefore I won't because I don't want to get in trouble. Yeah, so- you've got a family now. You don't want to go to prison over uh, over that, so it's not worth it. So, so the value of, of you know, th- there is no value societally because only the inmates right. that don't want to break the law won't break the law. Exactly. If you wanted to go on a robbery uh, spree, you could go and get a gun and right. go do that. If for whatever reason I felt like that was the thing I wanted to do, getting a gun would be the smallest of my problems. And yeah. these anti-gun laws just don't work. So I say give out a pardon to every ex-con that has uh, been yeah. clear of supervision for five years. You'd have to, I'm just curious, would you have to do a constitutional amendment to make that happen? Because you couldn't legislate that the governor give out pardons, right? Would because that, of the separation of powers? Or would that be a Supreme Court thing? I couldn't tell you what precisely they would do because the power rests with the governor. But right. what you could do... Based on the Constitution. What you could do in these states, um, in, you know, like the United States government could say, all right, Inmates who have been clear of, like, you could have all the rules taken away. The United States government could say that, um, you know, the ATF can only say that people um, that uh, have not been uh, you know, in trouble for less than five years or something like that are not allowed to have weapons. After that, everybody can. So that would be a law. Now, a pardon is a power of a governor, but every aspect of a pardon can be legislated. Uh, I see what you're saying. Okay. So the legislature in the state of Florida can say, all right, if you've been clear of problems for the last five years, then you, you can, can vote. vote again. But the state of Florida currently thinks I am too weapon. dangerous to vote. But is but it's just fine that I walk around and have knives yeah. and I can own a gun that is uh, made before 1898 and a whole variety of stupid things. <laughs> I can have a black powder pistol, walk around with it on my hip, walk into strip clubs and, uh, and and liquor stores, but I cannot do a mathematically insignificant act known as voting. What about a sword? Can you have a sword? Yes. 
Like a full-on I have a, sword, I have a sword now, and nice. New Hampshire lets me have a sword. However, I cannot have a sword cane. A, a, that oh, is a sword concealed? that is encased in a, uh, a, a, that's, in a cane. That's a, that's a sneaky sword. Right. You can't have a sneaky sword. You can only have an <laughs> obvious sword. <laughs> Wow. And I can't have a dirk, as de- defined by the statutes, or a blackjack, but you can have a sword. Makes no sense. If you want to comment on the situation with felons in America, it is really just you know the scarlet letter for a lot of people. It makes life very, very difficult on people who want to make their lives better, many of them. And when it's hard to make a living because of the felon, uh, the, you know, the rap, if you will, that you've got that travels along with you, that could lead somebody to more crime if they feel like they can't really make it in the real world because of their felony that may lead them to commit more criminal acts it seems like it's very american to allow people to make a mistake make good for that mistake and then go on with their life that that is a very american thing to do but it's not like america at all all right, so the toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. If you'd like to join us here on Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733 or Skype in. Skype username here is lrn.fm. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now I'm giving this book away for free. So who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-5836. Skeptical that it will deliver results? It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-5836. 1-800-944-5836. Hi, this is Walt Augustinowitz. I'm the founder and CEO of ID Stronghold. By now you've heard our commercials about wallets that protect you from electronic pickpocketing. Ten years ago, I created a way to protect my own cards from prying eyes after government officials started talking about issuing a national ID card with a built-in radio chip called RFID. I felt having to broadcast my personal information was an invasion of privacy. Soon after, it was also announced that credit cards, debit cards, U.S. passports, hotel room keys, and even transit passes would all soon incorporate RFID. It was then I formed ID Stronghold to share my inventions in blocking RFID signals with the world. There are a lot of misconceptions out there today about RFID. I encourage everyone to get informed and get protected. Please go to IDStronghold.com and get the facts and the wallet sleeves or badge holders you need to protect your personal financial data. You'll be pleasantly surprised that through our direct sales model, you won't pay more than other comparable unprotected wallets. It is as though the protection is free. Visit IDStronghold.com today. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. 
If you have a business, you know that IT can be frustrating, but it doesn't have to be. IT can serve your needs reliably, predictably, and on time. Rootwork Infotech helps businesses achieve always-on reliability. They're nerds, no business, and can meet your needs. To prove it, they'll give you 30 minutes on the phone with a senior consultant for free to answer any of your IT questions. Just go to rootwork.it slash FTL to get your free call. That's R-O-O-T work.it slash FTL. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and of course you can join us here toll free. 855-453-FREE is the number. Life as a felon, and maybe you have some experience. Thankfully, uh, I do not have a felony. Conan, I don't believe that you do either. Not yet. Uh, Mark, however, does. I got a big fat one. Some indiscretions of his made at about age 17. He's now in his early 40s. And, you know, you're a different person 20 years later. You're not at all, you're not even the same physical human being. I don't know if it's true, but I've heard that your body generates, you know, enough new cells uh, or whatever over a seven seven years, seven year time frame that every cell in your body has completely changed out after seven years. You are literally not the same person you were a decade ago, but yet the government will just tag you with this felon thing. And then you've got to live with that for the rest of your life. I think the only thing worse than being tagged as a felon is being tagged as a sex offender. And that's probably the, the only thing that's worse Simply because as a sex offender, in a lot of cases, you can't even live in certain places. You're restricted from even being uh, in certain areas of given towns and counties. Yeah, and such. I wonder, like, there's some people out there that have achieved a great deal of infamy, for instance. Uh, like, the, the most recent one is probably that dentist that shot the lion. Yeah, okay. Um, I couldn't tell you his name now, but I probably could a week ago. And, uh, you know, there was... Uh, I only I, know his name because it's the same name as one of our program directors. Okay. <laughs> or, or the guy who ran over the Batman, the Lamborghini Batman, just recently. Oh, yeah. Um, if, if his name ever gets out there, he's going to be... He's never going to be able to live that down. Well, there was these... Uh, there was a woman that killed her children. Uh, I can't remember where, by, you know, drowning them in a car. And, um, you know, yeah. I think she's still in jail. But there was the one that got away. So, got away. I, I don't even know what happened in the case. But a um, lady recently that... I guess buried her daughter without telling the police, and you know it was a weird story. Buried her alive? No, she was supposedly with dead. Oh, okay. I don't know what the story is. No one seems to know. It's a weird case. Gotcha. Um, but you know, there's these names that go down, uh, sort of infam- In infamy. In- infamy. But I, I, I'm, I don't imagine that they're, uh, you know, that even you know, 20 years later, that people are really paying that much attention. So I think that it's, yeah, even. A felony um, that happens so much uh, later that eh, um, that that's probably worse. A lot of people are like, "Well, so what? You did it. You should do the crime. You do the time." As though forever. As, as though anybody who's doing a crime is thinking about going to prison. I mean, that's not really the psychograph of people that are you know committing crimes. Usually, it's somebody who believes the I don't know they're gonna get away with it, mm. or they don't care what the consequences yeah. are. I don't give up. Yeah, yeah, they they don't care, and so um, or, or they don't think that they're actually hurting anyone. Mm. Right. So if you punish attempting to punish seventeen year old Mark, um, and you know seventeen year old Mark made some terrible decisions, A and the results S. were awful. Um, and and it wasn't just one set of terrible decisions. It was a it was a it was a string of and terrible you were a commie back then. A whole bunch of terrible decisions. <laughs> oh, man, surprised by that. That was Horrible. a minor um, aspect of what I uh, I did. But to attempt to punish 17-year-old Mark by punishing 44-year-old Mark and his family yeah. is pre- a pretty ineffective way of deterring the, the new 17-year-old Mark from doing right. the sort of things that might be in the future. I mean, let's... If we're going to put up deterrence, let's find effective ones, not ones that are based entirely on emotion and vengeance. I do like that vision, Mark. If you want to share your thoughts with us here, 855-450-FREE is our number. We've got Skype as well. It's Skype username LRN.FM. Uh, so, Mark, you've got a little more to this story here from the Free Thought Project. Specifically, what I thought was interesting looking at it is Governor BB is his name, Mike BB in Arkansas. He has pardoned his own son 
or he's planning to pardon his own son for a drug dealing charge that he had over a decade ago. Did you want to share the quote from the governor where he's actually calling for stricter penalties specifically against drug dealers? <laughs> right. So he, he's, he has no problem with uh, saying that, uh, you know, his son's uh, made some mistakes and all these things, but uh, and he has. Um, and, you know, he's going to pardon. Yeah, the him. mistake was getting caught. Well, um, he's going to pardon him. And but in 2011, in the Arkansas State of the State address, BB called for stricter penalties against drug sellers, saying that our drug statutes must put a stronger emphasis and heavier penalties on those involved with the drug trade. Remember, his son basically got probation. Isn't that right? Yeah. Was it like three years or something? Instead of uh, giving equally harsh sentence sentences to those merely arrested for mere possession or use, previous legislatures have built a grid of sentencing guidelines, a grid that is often manipulated or ignored to uh, put away offenders for even longer stretches of time. These guidelines must be more closely followed or perhaps those jurisdictions that frequently exceed the grid should share in the cost of incarceration with our state. The proposed budget adds more than $4 million to help accommodate the Department of Community Corrections' anticipated larger role. Governor Beebe is comfortable to admit that his son made a bad decision when he was wrong and that he does not observe, deserve the, um, to live with the consequences for his entire life. But sadly, Beebe will not give the millions of others in, his, um, country, in the country the same luxury. The quote before that you just read, when did he say that? Was that sometime? 2011. All right, so, all right, so all right, so it wasn't in the same week. No, but it was after his son had been convicted, right? Cause That's true. This was a decade ago that his son got popped for this, and so this was within that time frame. Uh, so it was the you know he definitely knew what was going on with his son at that time when those words were coming out of his mouth. What an awful hypocrite! Yeah, it, it you know I mean he he just seems to be a big believer that incarceration is going to be a good solution to the drug problem, and I think that. If the wave of uh, crank and heroin use in this country that's taking over small, uh, taking over whole swaths of the country is any indication, it is an abject failure. If you want less drug use, if you want people getting over uh, their drug use, the best thing to do is to give them some kind of treatment for that. You know, BB might actually agree with us, uh, where you know he believes that his son with a felony over his head is never going to be able to get out of it and it's going to uh it's going to alter his livelihood. It's going to it's going to make it it, it's going to make it worse for him and for the the people who have to take care of him now or have to deal with him. And what but what about the rest of the, you know, thousands, 10,000s, however many that uh are going through the same situation as we speak. As time goes by, it's going to get more and more difficult to fib about your felony. So what I decided I was going to do when I got out of prison in 1998 is lie. I was just not going to tell people I was a convicted felon. No, no. I wasn't going to say no. I just wasn't going to say anything. I wasn't going to fill out. If I had to fill out a form, I was not going to say. I was just no is the answer. And I got away with that for as long as um, I wanted to get away with it. At uh, you know, ultimately, I did was... they know you were a felon when they hired you at the radio station? No. Yeah. How many jobs <laughs> did you apply for during that that period of time? I didn't have to f apply for the job at the radio station, so I didn't have to lie about it. Ah, uh, that's um, right. You got headhunted. I got headhunted into the radio station, but I did look at another job while I was at the radio station that I had to fill out an application for, and I said no. And <laughs> so, um, you know, these things uh, happen. So that helped you, right? Not saying that you were a felon helped you likely get a job. Probably the case. Yeah. I mean, it's just if you're all things are equal, you're looking at two qualified candidates and one of them is a convicted felon and the other one's not a um, convicted felon. You're probably going to take the person who has the clean record simply because it's the safe thing to do. And people do the safe thing when doing business. You know what would help you get a job, Mark? being the governor's son. Yeah, that certainly would. All right, more on the way here. You can share your thoughts. 855-450-FREE. More of your calls and thoughts. 855-450-3733. We've also got Skype. Skype username here is lrn.fm. But what does he have to say about his son? We'll give you that quote coming up. We use mobile devices right against our bodies every day, but growing scientific evidence has emerged showing serious health risks associated with exposure to EMF radiation emitted from these devices. The solution is Defender Shield, the most effective mobile radiation shielding ever developed. Defender Shield blocks virtually 100% of EMF radiation from cell phones, tablets, and laptops and starts at just $64.99. Buy now at DefenderShield.com. For 10% off, use promo code GCN. DefenderShield.com, the worldwide leader in mobile radiation shielding.
We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit and carting to a private bank, having it lent back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Our digital freedom is under attack. Look no further than Ross Ulbrich's life sentence to see that. After all, it's not Ross's freedom they're after. It's yours. It is bigger than Ross and bigger than a website. I think one website is by far less dangerous than the government trampling on our rule of law. The appeal is underway, and we've organized a grassroots fundraiser at cryptoshow.com backslash free Ross. Up for grabs is... Cody Wilson's Ghost Gunner, A Week in Costa Rica, My Magic Mud, Ghost Outside the Machine t-shirt. These prizes are really great. There's a ton more. So go to thecryptoshow.com slash free Ross. Please tell all your friends. Share it up. Our grassroots tactics allow for 100% of all funds raised to go directly to freeross.org. So check out thecryptoshow.com backslash free Ross. And don't forget freeross.org. This is your Robertson Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Tuesday, gold is down $2 at $1,113 per ounce. Silver is down $0.53 cents at $14.86 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at $253 US dollars. Looking for a way to sit out the Bitcoin fork? Robertson Roberts can convert your Bitcoin to silver. Visit us online at rrbi.co or give us a call at 800-874-9760. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. Now, a lot of little girls do ballet even though their fathers couldn't care less and don't see what the big deal is. But one talented little prodigy actually choreographed a whole ballet that her father could enjoy and even look forward to. Let's meet Erin Kemper and her father, Jack. Hi. Thanks for having us. Erin, how did you do that? I thought about all the things that my dad likes to watch and put it into a ballet. Well, we have a special treat for you today because Erin is now going to perform her new ballet. When I pay the bills, I get to make the rules. We can't afford that. World War II. I miss your mother too, but we're gonna have to do the best without her. Go Redskins! Bravo! Well done. Boy, I wish she were mine. You know, my two girls are grown up, but you still couldn't pay me to watch one of their acapella shows. <laughs> what inspired you to create this amazing ballet? I'm really inspired by the theme of my dad paying any attention to me at all. Now, at the end, I hear she just put the game up on the big screen. I don't know where she gets it. <laughs> this is the Onion News Network. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Yeah! This is Free Talk Live, and you can join us here toll-free on the radio at 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733, joining you in studio. You've got Ian. And Conan. And Mark. And Mark, tell me something important. Well, um, Liberty HealthShare is, uh, for my family, it's been the solution to Obamacare. Um, it really, it, it solves our problems and does it in a way that is significantly less costly, at least for us, than it uh, has been. I, I don't know. I can't look at everybody's situation. Um, if your company's paying for your insurance, I, I would imagine that that's the best way to go. But if you've got to pay for your own or a significant portion of your own, this was like half the cost of insurance. What Liberty Health Share is, is a sharing organization of people who are sharing the costs of healthcare in an easy and efficient way. Um, and it, what, that's what it is. I mean, it's people uh, sharing the burdens of uh, healthcare. And this is essentially what insurance does, but it does it without all the overhead that insurance companies have. So 
You can choose your own doctor, choose your own hospital, and live out your values in healthcare. You can uh, join the movement with me by going to libertyhealthshare.org. Check it out. It's worth taking your time if you're paying for insurance. LibertyHealthShare.org. And um, the telephone number is 855-58-LIBERTY. It's worth a telephone call to be able to save this kind of money, too. 855-58-LIBERTY. LibertyHealthShare.org. More coming up on the governor, who is apparently going to be pardoning his own son for drug dealing in, uh, what was it, Arkansas. But first, we go to Scott listening in Alabama. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Scott. Hello. Welcome, sir. You're on How the you air. Doing, Mark? Yes. Um, I was done in uh, Can you do system. me a favor? I'm sorry. You're a little loud. Can you back away from your phone, maybe about an inch and a half or so? I got you, man. Appreciate yeah. that. Thanks. I was, yeah, man. I was done in by the system about uh, 1991, 92. Um, was was that was a uh, accused and convicted of a sex crime there was a uh, child custody battle going on in my family and I guess the last ditch resort the uh, grandmother who was the DA secretary and the mother who works for DHR or DFAX or in Georgia they uh, turned my life and my family's life inside out. Well, what did they accuse and, you of? Some sort of sex uh, thing that you didn't do? Yeah, with 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 a niece. And oh, no. uh, my brother was trying to get yeah, and uh, my brother was trying to get custody at the time, and he was living at the home uh, where my mom and dad lived. So. Anyway, went to prison for 10 years. Wow. Tried to fight it from prison. You can't do that. You can't fight nothing from prison. It's a system. It's all, it's all, it's so, all made up. Just to clarify, the they got thing. this niece to testify against you for something that you say you didn't do? Right. And, you know, in all this time, it's been, uh, all this time since then, you know, there's just been this uh, question in my mind, you know, of, because no, I didn't do it at all. I did nothing like that to, ever to anyone. And and it, what what gets me is, uh, you know, I wonder, you know, the D, it, it being the grandmother was the DA secretary. They all lived in, under one household, right? So and the mother was worked for DFAX at the time. Uh, I wonder what kind of stories they came in. And told at the din- at the kitchen or table or the dinner table at night. I'm just curious. After a decade, uh, did this niece did she ever recant? Did she ever come no, out? No, she was. Listen to her here. It was supposed to have happened in 1986. They said that it's supposed to have happened in not. They said it's supposed to happen six years prior to when they arrested me. And it didn't. Uh, you well, know, I, was, I mean, those those things old, have a long a statute of. Had a beautiful uh, girl limitations on them yeah well, i'm sorry to hear about me. that what can you do though i mean what, you, did you plea out or did you take question. it all the way to trial yeah i took it all the way to trial so they actually had this girl no, come up on been... on the stand and, and testify against you right right how old was she at the but, time of the com- supposed commission of the crime uh, six six Man. so my life is messed up for the rest of my life yeah i bet it is it's, and, uh, and to drag uh, around a sex crime is so, it's tough. Well, to have one that you didn't do right. is even worse. Do, it, you, uh, do like, you even uh, have a job? No, no. I uh, when I first uh, came home, got out of prison, came home. Uh, I could work it. I that job was really easy and everything. But now here they have put this thing on your driver's license that uh, pretty much well. You know, any employer that asks to see your driver's license or oh, whatever. Oh, no. 
So it actually well, indicates you, on your driver's license that you are a, a sex offender. It says it says sex offender. Yeah. Oh, sure yeah. What do you? What's the reason for that? Putting that on the driver's license so that just to brand somebody to make I mean, it hard for them. To I want away. him to answer the question. What? What? What do they claim the reason for putting? I mean, I, I imagine that uh, victims of sex assault, assault crimes don't get a chance to see people's driver's licenses beforehand. So what is their claim that the the reason for doing that? Yeah, I mean, are, I are you punished for, punish for the rest of your life? I I yeah, I mean, it you seems know, pretty clear. There's some out there, I'm sure, that are, are are very well, you know, that need something like that. But just like you said, uh, a person who a person who uh, you know doesn't commit felonies or doesn't commit crime or anything like that, they I'm don't screwed. need this right here. Scott, thanks uh, yeah, for sharing I mean, your story tonight, man. I really appreciate hearing from you, and it's hard, you know. Who do you who do you believe? In a situation like that, I mean, that's it's her word against his word. Yeah, people would say that if you try to, um, some people would say that if you remain skeptical, if you uh, wait for the the uh, you know to wait to come to a conclusion that you're propagating rape culture, right? Like if you you're not believing the victim immediately, um, and nobody wants to do that, and obviously the severity of a uh, of a charge like that can be. Uh, you know, it scares the, the the crap out of everybody involved, right? Mm-hmm. There's been a child that's been molested, and uh, supposedly, I mean, that's the that's the story. I'm never going to know. I wasn't there, and only one person knows. You know, the, the person who was allegedly molested. Two, um, the person who uh, allegedly did it. Well, <laughs> I, maybe he was in a some sort of a fugue state. Maybe he was so uh, so drunk that uh, he actually did do what they are saying he did, but he doesn't remember it. That wouldn't matter to me um, if they if he made the decision to get that drunk and uh, did it. it would... I know that wouldn't matter. I'm just I'm just I'm not saying that was a reason for him to do it or anything yeah. like that. I'm just saying that would be a reason he might not remember it, right? Yeah. Like so, it may just be the one person who has the actual memory, even two. though I'm going to go ahead and say two generally. Yeah, like generally you're right about that, but there could be a circumstance in which the offender does not actually remember doing what they did. They could be sleepwalking, yep. they could be under the influence heavily, and it's just terrible because, you know, how can one person's word be believed over another? I, I understand that if it's true that he did what they say that he did, that that's a horrible thing, but there have been cases where children have told lies about these things. Sure, there's the uh, that, that famous one out of... Uh, South Florida, where the uh, the uh, the preschool, uh, basically a whole bunch of kids made stories. Up. Really? Yeah. And you don't wow. remember this one? No. Nope. Uh, I'd have to look it up. A but, preschool. Uh, it was uh, it was a nursery, and um, you know, to some extent, the kids would say things like, uh, you know, they have a torture room down in the basement. There was no basement um, in Florida. Know, <laughs> you know, like a, there was just sort of demonstrably false things about it. But people kept saying to themselves, oh, wow. "Well, these kids." wouldn't say i mean they, they may not have everything exactly right but they wouldn't be telling these outright lies but it just kept piling up and piling up it was this sort of uh, uh you know this momentum that was built up my and, gosh you got more than one of them making an accusation like that that is going to put somebody away for a long time well what you, they'd have these counselors come in and they'd have a doll and then say oh, all right did they touch you here did they and, touch you here and, and the way they introduced those counselors i mean you got to suspect them as well i mean they're it, uh, yeah, job you, you to have, find you, out, right? You have to be suspect. They have to be suspected as well. All right, uh, you can share your thoughts with us here on Free Talk Live. Our toll-free number is 855-450 free. Whether it's felonies or hypocritical governors, we can talk about any of those things. Hey, speaking of politicians, Bernie Sanders wants to control your guns. Coming up on Free Talk Live. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. 
Paid non attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24 7. Call 800 261 0937. That's 800 261 0937. So I say to Mark at lunch, look, you know, I keep hearing from the government that, you know, they're worried someday ISIS may get here. And I go, duh, uh, Garland, Texas, Muhammad cartoon shooting. ISIS is already here. I'm not waiting for these people to defend me. If they don't know ISIS is here already, they got no clue. I'm taking care of myself. Guns80.com, AR-15 kits, 30-shot magazines, great prices. They've even got the Hillary special. Guns80.com, that's 844-2-GUNS-80, guns80.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 85% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. If you're a regular reader of FreeKeen.com, you know there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at FreeKeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at FreeKeen.com. That's FreeKeen.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at FFF at FFF.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's FFF at FFF.org. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. Our toll-free number for you to join us here is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And don't forget, we've got Skype as well. Skype username here tonight, lrn.fm, talking about felonies and life as a felon, how difficult things can be. And let's go to your calls and thoughts here. Uh, Larry's listening in North Carolina to uh, Talk Radio 850 in Raleigh. Hey, Larry. Hey, good evening to you. Welcome, sir. I've You're been on the air. I've been listening to you guys ever since I discovered you about six months ago, and I'm very impressed. Thanks. Go ahead with your thoughts. I thought I would weigh in on being the next convict, of which you're talking to one. And I will tell you that, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the system is so corrupt, it's pathetic. I received a 10-year sentence for treating and getting sick and hurting people well. Oh. I am, I am a uh, registered chiropractor. I've been a chiropractor since the 1970s, and in the state of Florida, in the Middle District, I had seven clinics. With those seven clinics, I had seven chiropractors working for me, as well as four medical doctors. The medical doctor that I had on staff was uh, born and raised in Taiwan, and he was a natural holistic doctor 
And when he came to the United States, was absolutely appalled at the amount of drugs that was being dis- uh, dispensed by medical doctors. Mm-hmm. And when he found my clinic organization, he was very excited to become a member of it. Unfortunately, with all the federal government hassle that occurred, he couldn't handle it. And although it was deemed to be an accident, all those that uh, knew him were sure it was suicide. He just couldn't handle it. Oh, my. I went through a court case that uh, was absolutely a, uh, a circus. They brought in a special prosecutor from the OIG out of Washington, D.C., because the local prosecutor could not even handle the case. What were you they charged with? Over- I was charged with treating people and using the medical doctors to bypass laws and regulations that chiropractors could not work under. So what there's I did certain was, things that a medical the, doctor can do legally that a chiropractor cannot do? That's correct. And you had medical doctors who were doing those things, but you were also doing those things? No, I was not doing them, but I was the CEO of the clinic operation. So because you were employing the doctors, that somehow meant you were a criminal. (laughs) That's correct. Uh, If it was uh, reversed, if the medical doctor was hiring a chiropractor, that was fine. But they were bound bound and determined they were not going to have a chiropractor hire medical doctors. Did this come down on you after the man committed suicide? Was it it a coincidence, or was that just somehow that uh, brought your offices to the attention of the... The government guys, because it sounded, I mean, you said you had several offices, so it sounded like things were going smoothly, or they appeared to be, for a while, right? Uh, Quite a while, for over a decade. Yeah, so uh, was it after the suicide when the bumps in the road happened, so to speak? No, no, it it started before then. Okay. And uh, the reason the MD, uh, like I mentioned, he's from Taiwan, and uh, honor, that's the whole the concept of the Taiwan people. I it is total honor. And as far as we could can, uh, gather, uh, he felt like he was being dishonored and didn't want his family to go through mm-hmm. anymore. Who do you think uh, put the word out about you? Was it one of the competitors, some other doctor in town who was upset about you being there? Uh, how did they come down I, on you? Do you know? It came down by one investigator Coming out of uh, Clearwater, Florida, uh, he was bound and determined that he was going to find something wrong. He, uh, under the guise of Medicare rules and regulations, he's allowed to uh, come in and look at the Medicare uh, records. It was not an audit. It ended up being an investigation that lasted for nearly six years. And you went to prison they, for how long for this? A decade? I went to prison on on a 10-year sentence, Jeez. and if the attorneys that I had hired did anything good at all, is it was at that point in time in the early uh, late 90s, it was, uh, I'm sorry, early 90s, it was old law and new law. Now, if you ask me about that, I'm not really too, too sure what it means, because I'm not an attorney. But the 10-year sentence, I ended up doing five years. Five so years like in I Florida said, prison? I don't know. It's in federal prison. Oh, in federal. Okay. Wow. I thought federal was 85%. Oh, he got some sort of deal. Okay. I'm not sure about percentages. Yeah. Wow. And it sounds, I mean, if I I may, it sounds like you are not a young man right now. How old were you when you got put into prison? I'm 76 years old now. I was 58 years old. My goodness. And and the reason I'm weighing in is I'm an ex-convict in which... As you guys have mentioned, I will be for the rest of my life. Yep. But there's no way to get away from it. It's an amazing what story. What I found when I, when Go I got into prison, uh, I absolutely was appalled at the amount of drugs that the MDs, the so-called hospitals, were dispensing to the uh, prison population. Mm-hmm. And I decided that I'll treat them chiropractically. I was seeing an average of 8 to 10 people per day for various 
ailments that did not require drugs. I'll bet that and got you getting, in some trouble. Oh, yeah, you're rubbing salt in the wounds, man. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> did they I punish you for that? In the hole. I spend more time in the so-called hole than you can imagine. Every time I turned around, they were sending me back for made-up reasons. Just for trying to help people. I, now, what I did is I started out in a camp. I got transferred to medium security. I then got transferred to maximum security. <laughs> and regardless of where I went, I, I kept treating people. In Good maximum for you. security, they, they finally told me that I didn't belong in maximum security, and they sent me back to medium security, which is where I spent the last two and a half, three years. Wow, Larry. Uh, Incredible story. Mark, as the uh, man who spent nine years in prison, do you have any uh, questions for Larry? I, I, I'm i just stunned by the whole story. Um, you know, what prisons are good at is behavior modification, right? Like there's enough— Like uh, turning a criminal into a worse criminal? Yeah, it, there may not be a lot of carrots in prison, but there is a darn big stick. And there aren't too many people that are, will stand up in the face of that stick and keep on doing what they think is, you know, right. Um and so I'm I'm amazed at the story, Larry. It's a great story, Larry. Thank you. Go ahead. I want to make one more point, yes. if I could. You may. Being a uh, an expert in camps, mediums, and security maximums, from a convict's point of view, something occurs in prison. Convicts, if they're guilty, they admit it to other other prisoners. Oftentimes. And it doesn't take long to figure it out. Those that are not guilty will also say, hey, I'm not guilty, and you can figure it out. Percentage-wise, in my mind, 20% of those in a camp belong there. 80% don't. Hmm. You wow. go to the medium, it's 50-50. And you go to the maximum, the, re the percentage is, is reversed. Hmm. Larry, Actually, how, how many of those 80% who said that they didn't commit a crime maybe did the crime but believed that what they did was not wrong. Like maybe, for example, they had some, some weed on them or something, or they were selling drugs to someone and they didn't believe that they were wrong. They actually committed the crime, but they just didn't believe it was anything wrong with what they were doing. Yeah, but that goes back into the 20% uh, that belong there, 80% in the camp. When you get into the 80-20s in the, in the maximums, uh, that 80%, they're bad people. 20% of them don't belong there. Larry, I want to say thank you so much for the call, the expertise, and your experience. I really appreciate it. I appreciate the uh, the courage that you showed. Yeah, and, thank you for your courage. Yeah, and standing by your beliefs even in the uh, most tra challenging of times. Thank you for the call tonight, Larry. Uh, wow, we need, we need people like Larry in New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project. Uh, elderly guys and gals who, who have not, the gumption. Who are, who are not afraid to rub the salt yeah. in the eyes of the oppressor. I love it. I love that uh, that call. I'm sorry that it happened to him, and I, I'm not surprised to hear about that. You, know, you don't have the government paperwork? They come at you harder than they come at anybody who stabs or murders a person in certain instances. I, th and I, I would not be, uh, yeah. I think it's competition. I think it was a whole competition thing. I bet you it was somebody who ratted him out. Some doctor in town probably called the cops on him or whatever investigatory board it was that took him out. 855 450 free. You can share your thoughts, your story, your whatever. It's Free Talk Live. Breathe it in, kid. Every three months, we install these air handler filters. They're more energy efficient, hold more dust, and are priced to save us more money. And Granger's got close to 3,000 different styles and sizes to choose from. In stock and ready when we need them. I love oxygen, kid. And this facility's got some great AO2. I'm breathing easier just thinking about these air handler filters. Get some today. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com slash filters or stop by. Granger. For the ones who get it done. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. 
Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, August 18th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.09 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,118 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $258. Antiwar.com reports the governor of the southern Yemeni port city of Aden, currently occupied by the pro-Saudi forces of the government in exile of Yemen, said the city will be declared the nation's official capital for the next five years and will be the focus of all reconstruction in the country in that period. Aden was the capital city of South Yemen through 1990 when the territory was annexed by North Yemen and has been the center of an active secessionist movement in recent years. The decision to make this the national capital, even on a temporary basis, could set up a conflict with that movement. The more immediate concern, however, is whether this suggests the pro-Saudi faction envisions the war lasting so long they need a new capital for half a decade. The capital of Sana'a is under control of the Shiite Houthi movement and has been under siege by Saudi airstrikes for months. Officials from the pro-Saudi faction had suggested they believe the momentum is theirs and that they can take back the rest of the country in short order. If that was really the case, however, they probably would not be looking to replace Sana'a with a new capital for several years to come. In Survivor Max by Davi Barker, 11-year-old Max must survive the zombie apocalypse alone in New Hampshire. Slow-moving and non-thinking, the lame brains swarm his home searching for living flesh. Max must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to plan his escape, but first he must prove that he's too smart to die. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook and Amazon or read Chapter 1 free at SurvivorMax.com. UPI reports the National Labor Relations Board on Monday blocked Northwestern University football players from becoming the first union of college athletes. The board did not rule on whether athletes should be considered employees of the school who have the right to unionize, instead citing the fact that labor law only allows the board to rule on private sector workplaces. The board said in the ruling statement, the board held that asserting jurisdiction over a single team would not promote stability and labor relations across the league. National College Players Association Executive Director Ramogi Huma filed a petition in 2014 with the board along with cards signed by an undisclosed number of players indicating they wished to be represented by the union. Huma, who played football at UCLA and helped form the NCPA in 2001, said the unionization movement had the support of the United Steelworkers Union. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports the Internal Revenue Service said Monday a hacking attack into one of the computer's databases revealed in May was much more extensive than previously thought, with nearly three times as many taxpayers hit by data theft. The IRS said in late May the tax return information of about 114,000 U.S. taxpayers had been illegally accessed by cyber criminals over the preceding four months, with another 111,000 unsuccessful attempts made. The new review has identified 220. 
20,000 additional incidents where data was breached. The tax collection agency said it identified another 170,000 suspected failed attempts by third parties to gain access to taxpayer data. The agency said in a statement, the IRS believes some of this information may have been gathered for potentially filing fraudulent tax returns during the upcoming 2016 filing season. It added that it will soon begin mailing letters in the next few days to the taxpayers whose accounts may have been accessed, offering them free credit monitoring and a new personal identification number to verify the authenticity of next year's tax returns. In May, the agency said that as a result of the breach, some 15,000 fraudulent returns were processed in the 20. 2015 tax filing season, likely resulting in refunds of less than $50 million. An IRS official said the agency was reviewing whether the number of fraudulent returns had grown due to more extensive data breaches, but that requires a manual review of the individual returns. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Calling it the most effective means to reaching one's full earning potential, a new report issued by the Employee Benefit Research Institute this week found that violently slamming one's supervisor against a wall and shouting cash, I need more cash, is still the leading tactic for securing a raise amongst American workers. We found that employees have the most success negotiating their salaries when they stride confidently into their supervisor's office, manhandle them like a rag doll, and demand more money right now. Experts confirmed that the majority of employees who managed to increase their salaries maintained direct eye contact with their supervisors while reiterating that they were not f***ing around, emphasizing their position with phrases such as, give me the money now, and I said more cash, old man. The Onion sat down with Kevin Simmons, who recently applied these methods in negotiating a competitive bump in his annual salary. So the other day I walked right into his office, grabbed his throat with my hand, and told him straight up, start paying me more f***ing money today. And I grabbed 100 bucks out of his wallet and told him that was a good start. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. This is Free Talk Live, and you are welcome to join us. Here on the radio waves, 855-450-FREE is our number. That's 855-450-3733. I was actually in court today in Manchester. We can talk about what happened there with Shire Dude's trial, which actually never went to trial. And I'll explain why that uh, did not occur when we get the chance. Of course, your calls come first here. Toll-free number 855-450-FREE. We also have Skype at Skype username lrn.fm tonight in studio you've got ian and conan and mark let's go right to the phones and the fun john's in minnesota listening in northern minnesota to wnmt hey john yes sir uh i don't know if you ever heard of a book called medical mussolini no it's by morris a b l -L b e a l l e and he wrote this book in 1939 i heard about it in 1969 and I didn't find it until 19, uh, I mean, 2004, huh. I found the book. It's been a long it, time it, coming. It was extremely rare. And it wrote about how the drug industry and the medical industry uh, joined up together to try to do away with people that were healing people naturally mm. without using the herbs of the field and the leaves of the trees. And... Uh, and they are trying to do away with it, and uh, there's a big pushback uh, in our in our world right now to get to get back to natural remedies. And yeah, but unfortunately, the laws and the regulations are still arrayed against those things. I've even heard of the FDA has an enforcement wing. They have FDA cops who actually raid like natural health stores and things like that. If, uh, for instance, if Somebody's making a so-called health claim about, oh, cranberries will do X, Y, and Z, and then that's illegal. So they'll come in there with a yeah. goon squad and shut the store down. Yeah, this guy out in California was making this uh, natural uh, uh, chelation, Dr. Donsbach, and they came in there with uh, machine guns threatening him and took all his formulas and all this stuff, of course— 
a lot of these people are pretty smart. They have copies of it and they give sure. it out to other people. But it's still but, terrifying. I mean, to have anybody come in and raid your business or your office is just an absolutely horrifying uh, concept. And it, no one should have to go through that who's not actually, you know, hurting another person without their consent. And certainly there are going to be skeptics out there, and I may be one of them, you know, who says, oh, what is this? nonsense chelation you know, chelation <laughs> or uh, what's uh what's this voodoo uh, yeah what's what's the what's this uh, witch doctor what's the thing where there's like a very small amount of something in Homeop the, homeopathy. Homeo homeopathy that's what it was so there's a lot of critique on this stuff but that's where it should end is just the open marketplace of people discussing what the best options are and what works and what doesn't work and and, and, and having these options available so yeah. hey let me go try the the witch doctor first and then if it doesn't work you know what i'll try them for five weeks and if it doesn't work i'll go get the chemo John, thanks for your well, call. Witch, Go ahead. The, the, witch, the witch doctor thing, the, the, the medical industry, it goes back to sorcery. Yeah, it, I wouldn't I wouldn't disagree. Yeah, they're trying to get away from that, though, I imagine. Thanks for the call tonight, <laughs> John. I appreciate it. Uh, Here's I, I think what I envision, some... is, is I imagine what would happen at some point or another is different sort of medical fields, uh, medical organizations would rate doctors, right? Like, so, you know, the AD, uh, AMA, for instance, would probably be an organization that would certify some doctors. They you, would be, you're talking about in a world in which there's no government monopoly right, protecting the government them? Mon yeah, with the government monopoly, the government gets completely out of medicine. And prices are going to plummet if they do, mm. um, because you know you you won't have the the, you know, the government driving prices up and all this other stuff. But anyway, there'd be the AMA deciding, uh, you know, this doctor's definitely AMA certified. This one isn't. But the homeopathic organization would certify, you know, one doctor and say definitely this allopathic medicine uh, specialist he's not. And so you'd have people that were certified by different organizations. They'd go for those certifications because those are the kind of customers they're trying to right. attract and you know as far as i'm concerned if somebody wants to be treated with uh, homeopathy water then that's what they should be able to get treated with you know you're talking about some organization actually rating these guys i can i foresee if they, everything was cleared out of the way and, and this was allowed you know some guy in his garage could just set up a forum and you could go online and you could rate your experiences with these uh, facilities like yeah i went to this guy you know I'm giving him five stars. This and this and this. He he was terrific. Well, uh, somebody who who, who um, I don't want the lady who went to the homeopathy place to. Uh, I don't care about her five star rating. It is irrelevant to me. I, I, yeah, I understand it. She, you know, you got you have to uh, believe what she's saying is yeah. true, and she could be talking right out of her butt. But I mean, I want that option to be on the table as well. I mean, it's not. I mean, I don't always look at the reviews when I you know, go watch a movie. But sometimes I like to flip down through, or when I'm watching a YouTube. But sometimes while the YouTube is playing, you know, I'm flipping down through the comments, and I'm sometimes you find interesting, <laughs> interesting details. <laughs> usually yeah, it's usually not it's not worth it, but sometimes you find good stuff. <laughs> That's true. Um, I think that uh, you know it's, it's sad what is happening to the people who have these alternative ideas. And again, maybe a bunch of them are complete BS. But that's not to say there isn't BS within the official allopathic medicine industry, too, right? Uh, where they're you know, constantly looking for something that's wrong with you. Oh, you've come into my office. Well, I feel obligated to find a problem with you, sir. <laughs> you know, well, get you on pills for the rest of your life. Right, whether they can find something wrong or not, they'll give you pills. Um, you'll get the antibiotics if you say, I, I don't feel good. I want some antibiotics. You're going to get some antibiotics. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the problems with antibiotic resistant uh, you know, viruses. Do Dr. These, Mark, me, I have a cold. There. I have a cold. Yeah, can right. you give me some antibiotics? It's a virus, and they give you an antibiotic for it, right? It's you know, it's a terrible thing to do. But doctors know that people want pills, and um, you know, at some point Pl or another, placebo. They, well, the, the, sorry, but everybody knows what the placebos are. You can't get the placebos no, through don't. the FCC. You, you don't know. Yes, well, actually, FDA, there was what me. was it? Somebody actually s selling placebos out there. Uh, I'll find out what it is here and tell it's you. Spe placebo spelled, spelled backwards. backwards. Yes. Yeah. Ah. What do you think about these holistic doctors that are all um, you know, coincidentally being found dead? I don't know anything have, about have that. Have you seen that? I, well, there's for a while there, there was the five. There's a mystery afoot. The five holistic health doctors found dead in four weeks. Uh oh. And I think that number is actually growing. This is, I don't know if, I don't know that that number How is actually growing, but oh, they're all between, looks like between 60 and 30. Okay. So, and these are all, you know, good-looking people. It's hard to find somebody yeah. um, between 60 and 30 found dead. Okay. <laughs> Obacalp. <laughs> Obacalp. <laughs> I mean, Here, just take two Ob Obacalp and call me in the morning. <laughs> I, I think that... <laughs> 
the, the probably the game. Like, can you imagine you lose a customer for life if you give them Obacalp and they figure it out? Wow, well, but yeah, I mean, if they don't tell them it's Obacalp. Yeah, but if they cured you, else. so you found out two years later, it's like, oh, wait, that thing I had that was cured of. It was total placebo. Yeah. <laughs> so do you go back and be like, ah, you, you ruined my life right. or, you know, or what? Or do you thank then them? Then it'll manifest again. All of a sudden, after you found out that it was uh, it was all BS. That's when I sit you down and say, no, dude, you're a hypochondriac. I mean, you, mm-hmm. you just, everything you think is bad for you. You know, you got the germ problem, you know, you wash your hands too much and, or whatever, you know, whatever your problem might be. Well, um, you know, I mean, here's what I'm thinking is is that you go, you get the prescription for Obacalp, and the doctor says, this will cure your whatever it is that... Uh, the you don't cli- need a prescription for Obacalp. It's a sugar pill. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that's the problem. People want a prescription. But that would be the red flag They'll when you know t- that you're being fed up with placebo. It's like, wait a minute, wait, why don't I need a prescription for this? You can still hand it out as the doctor, right? You've got it in your cabinet. You know how doctors have pills that's up there? That's a good that you idea. Don't have to, you don't have to... Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure you've done this before. Right, you've been in a doctor's office. And he's like, "All right, I'm going to write you this prescription for X, Y, Z pill, but I have some in the cabinet, so you can just take these with you, and then you can go get it filled uh, whenever you get the chance." You can do the same thing with the Obacal. Be like, "Oh, look, we can knock this out in a few short treatments." Here, uh, you know, shake the I pill bottle for them. I don't and then know. I, when's the last out, make a big deal of it. When's the last time they've had pills in the facility with them? I- Oh, at I doctor get it all the time. offices all the time. You all can you get have freebies to do is be poor. Um, yeah. Like you know, I go. I in thought there. you always had to go to the pharmacy down no, the no. road to get. All right. Well, I haven't been in a, a clinic in a long time. No. All you got to do is is basically be paying with a credit card. Look, um, you know, I'm <laughs> I'm in this. Uh, I'm insured by Mastercard here. And, Load me up. Uh, yeah. Uh, and they'll <laughs> they'll give you the the pills and that sort here, of thing. Have some oxycodone. Well, yeah. You know, it's happened to me. I'll never take. I don't take them. I'm not interested the in oxys. whatever whatever the pain is. I'd rather have the pain than. Uh, than the oxys because I I don't know I was talking to one dude today but heroin is so cheap Mark I mean come on (laughs) he told me the pain was so bad that he was experiencing he was really grateful to have something I'm not in that condition that's not my I'm not speaking to that right I was saying your pain may not have been as extreme as his pain but it wasn't 855 450 free this is free talk live Going back to the my vaccine thing, you cost me a lot of misery, and all total, $2,700 in doggy fees, and all it took was one container of Dynavite, two pounds, three ounces, and my dog has been cured. Abby's a five-year-old silky terrier. She had, like, chicken pox on her belly, clusters of bumps on her back, and she was allergic to, like, 70-some-odd things. So the dermatologist, it was like, oh, yeah, just keep giving her needles every 10 days, but she's not clearing up. And then I, it came up on my radio, Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E. And I was like, oh, that's it, that's it. I give her the Dynavite after five weeks. And one morning there was nothing there. And I'm like, oh, my God, she's all clear. There wasn't one blemish on her body. Her fur is beautiful. She is totally happy. She is a healthy, bump-free, pimple-free, shiny, silky. It turned our lives around. So thank you very much for Dynavite. I couldn't be happier. Dynavite's the bomb. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Have you ever felt like the United States government knows way too much about your financial affairs? I continue to hear stories about property seizures, frozen bank accounts, confiscation of stocks and bonds. It makes me wonder if the U.S. citizen will ever again have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Unfortunately, with the Drug and Money Laundering Act, the IRS Revenue Ruling 6045 of 1984, and the Trading with the Enemy Act and Franklin D. Roosevelt's Executive Order of 1933, some precious metal holdings are subject to government intervention. For this reason, reason Midas Resources has prepared a report explaining the boundaries of trading precious metals privately. Whether if you have any intention of trading with Midas Resources or not, I have instructed my representatives to give this report out free. Call for your free copy at 1-800-686-2237. When investing, always proceed with caution. Again, call 1-800-686-2237. Exercise your legal right to trade metals privately. 1-800-686-2237. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! 
the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills... Would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Join us here on the radio. Toll-free number 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Bernie Sanders wants to crack down on your gun rights, apparently. We can talk about that also. uh, Bernie wants to save you, Ian. Yeah, apparently. um, I'm in such danger here in New Hampshire where there's so much gun violence. Oh, wait, no. Nope, there's hardly any gun violence in New Hampshire. In fact, probably most of the gun violence comes at the hands of the police, as far as if this people... Is, this is true. Don't yeah. run from them. You'll get shot in the back of the head. <laughs> or in this case, in the back of the neck. That's what happened to one guy who uh, ran from the cops here in Keene, New Hampshire. So, uh, yeah, we can talk about guns, your freedom, whatever's on your mind. 855-450-FREE. Express coin, the best chance or choice for getting your cryptocurrencies. There's no chance with Express coin. You go and you send them a... Money order and check and or check, and they will send you Bitcoin. It is that easy. And you can do it from most of the places in the United States and Canada. Although, sorry, New Yorkers, you've got a bit license to uh, to worry about there. So apparently, uh, if you're in New York, you are SOL as far as ExpressCoin is concerned. But they're doing business in the super majority of the states. So whether you're in the U.S. or Canada, check them out over at ExpressCoin.com. You can do it from the smart your smartphone. They've got an app expresscoin.com use coupon code ftl like free talk live to get up to 40 dollars worth of cryptocurrency with no fee at all expresscoin.com coupon code ftl it is going to be hard to be a bitcoin lover and be in new york state i mean right now it's getting bad for anybody there uh it's my understanding local bitcoins is pulling out it's like china new york. yeah they uh they created this bit licensing we talked about it uh what a couple days ago here on the program the 10 most egregious privacy violations that they require you to go through just in order to be approved possibly to get one of these bit licenses if you can afford to shell out the hundred thousand dollars that it costs just to get through the process yeah uh that's if you want to do business as a Bitcoin business in New York. And I've yet to find anything that has really clarified for me, uh, so I'm unclear on this, as to if anyone is exempt from this bit license. If if you're just a business, let's say you're a retail business, a thrift store, for instance, in New York, and you're accepting Bitcoin, are they going to come down on you if you don't get one of these bit licenses? Or is it only for like the Bitcoin exchange businesses? I heard originally that it was the Bitcoin exchange businesses, but now recently I've been hearing that it's everybody who's doing business with Bitcoin. Hmm. So it's really scary for, for people uh, in I mean, the Bitcoin world. Because there. it's easy to be a Bitcoin provider. You can you know be right off the uh, the state lines. But if, sure. we, if we want this to really spread, you know, you've got to be able to accept it on your phone or whether you're a store or, or have maybe you have an ATM machine in your store. 
uh, selling it. If you're it, in New York, you, you probably won't for long. Wow, that's, that's that, my guess. Like I said, like just like China. Because how many of those uh, Bitcoin vending machine or ATM operators are willing to p- put up the hundred thousand dollars or whatever? Because the, the the reason I'm throwing that hundred thousand dollar number out is I was reading an article about some of the companies who did go through this process. There's like a few dozen companies who applied for this bit license. And one of them revealed how much they spent in, you know, like attorney's fees and the whole amount that it took them to spend to get through. So not just application fees with the government, but the various different things uh, that they had to do just to get through the application in the first place. Pretty, pretty horrible stuff. So if you're not in New York, go check them out at uh, expresscoin.com. I wonder if uh, this, those rules are what's causing the volatility in Bitcoin right now. There's been uh, some huge movement today. Really? I haven't been uh, been paying attention. Last I looked, it was around uh, $250 per yeah. Bitcoin. Well, um, it went down to on, uh, you know, as low as $220 today. Wow. Uh, so let's go to your calls and thoughts. Francine's in Texas. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian Conan and Mark. Yes. Okay, the man that called in a little while ago, he was a chiropractor in Florida. Larry. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I want to remind you all. The FDA does not like anything natural. They want you to take pills and die. They're totally against natural. Well, I don't think they want you to die I, immediately. I think they want you to pay, 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 pay and then die eventually. Yeah. But then you, they don't want you to get I better. More, no, they, no, they want you to just slowly collapse on prescriptions. And that there are, there, I mean, there are multitudes of ways to get well. A, a friend of mine found something online. I don't exactly know that he did it. It showed a man who was MS positive, which is an autoimmune disorder. And after two years of using this thing, he was MS negative. I yeah, mean, there and there are, are amazing positive. success stories out there in the world of alternative medicine. What works for one person may not necessarily work for another person, for however. Another. Yep. Oh, yeah, I'm aware of that. I'm aware of that. But there's, I've heard stories like just recently there were three doctors who had, and this happened uh, many times. There was a doctor. I don't know what it was, but in 55, he came up with a cure, a natural cure for cancer. They went and raided his office and destroyed all his records. Then in, sometime in the 60s, another doctor came up with a cure for cancer. They went and burned his office down. And then just recently, three doctors in Florida who had come up with a cure for uh, cancer were murdered. There's all kinds of stories like that out there. Thanks, Francine, for your call tonight. Our toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. Who knows whether those are true stories or not, but they sure are interesting. They're, Just, in, they're very interesting to read, and it's and these, and these people did die. It's like, but, you know, someone's put these, this information together, and it's like, wow, this, did this really happened? This is interesting. This, this would make a really good movie. Yeah, and I don't doubt somebody when they swear that XYZ alternative therapy cured their cancer. Uh, that's great. You know, was it pl- the placebo effect? Did you, you know, was, was just, it Jesus? Did you manifest it away? Uh, what well, happened? I, I can't speak to um, anybody else's. This is the thing: is, is I'm just not willing to tear down other people's uh, beliefs. I don't have cancer, yeah. and so you know, I, the decisions I would choose to make would be different. As I understand, Steve Jobs. This is you know things I've heard. I don't. Speak a lot of time researching it because again i don't have cancer but uh, it's my understanding steve jobs regretted his uh, alternative therapies and really? wished that he'd uh, hmm. taken the regular ones not that that would have necessarily saved him either you just don't know hmm. you by, really you know, don't. by the way speaking of uh, turning this into a movie uh the larry chiropractor uh story, story. oh you better That's believe great. it starring jack nicholson uh <laughs> you know fighting the uh the medical industry Great movie. I'm. I'm already. I'm. My ticket has already been purchased. So if you guys, if anyone out there wants to put that together, I'll watch it. They got some amazing stories out there, and you know everybody's got their own experience. And the thing with the uh, alternatives is that you're really not allowed to make claims about these things, right? You you can't say that such and such berry cures cancer. You can't. You can't do that. Wait, 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 why can't you say that? If you are, you know, a doctor or you're running a health food store or something like that, the FDA will come and they will do something awful to you. So when they say recommended by uh, five out of or three out of five dentists, they they're not really allowed to say that. You or can I- say a dentist recommends something. You just can't say what it does. Now I'm not a lawyer. You know, this is my layman's understanding of what the laws are about this. You cannot make a claim 
uh, a medical claim because about because a natural sh- product. Because it shows bias and you might be trying to push a product or something? Because or? the medical industry, the allopathic medicine, the sort of doctors and hospitals medicine industry, they've got a lockdown on the ability to make claims about cures. Even though the people in the natural healing industry, they truly believe, and to them, they know that certain things cure and do specific things in the natural world. They but, can't make those claims, right? Am I right about that? That's right. Yeah. They can't make the claims. Uh, no. So it's just incredible. I don't I mean, think you can say water hydrates you. <laughs> <laughs> water will cure hydration. Will de- dehydration. Wow. Yeah. Or, yeah, cure dehydration. You're going to lose your license, son. You see why I'm not a doctor. 855-450 free. You can share your thoughts here. This is Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. You are an individual with your own thoughts, decisions, and actions. So why should you be penalized for not enrolling in the subpar health insurance mandated by the government when you can be truly independent with Liberty HealthShare, a bold, innovative alternative allowing you to take back control and make your own decisions about your health care. Mention this ad when you call to learn more. 800-714-6993. That's 800-714-6993. Liberty HealthShare. Together, we are one. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of FreedomsPhoenix.com get every day. FreedomsPhoenix.com constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative. FreedomsPhoenix.com. Constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways. With liberty and property under constant attack, FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda, and it encourages the participation of its readers. Go to FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com. The revolution between the ears has already happened. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Stouffer's, helping bring your family together with wholesome dinner options even on the busiest of nights. Find dinner table ideas to bring your family together at letsfixdinner.com. To get kids involved in dinnertime conversation, ask specific questions, not broad ones. Instead of what happened today at school, try what was the best thing that happened today. The more specific you are, the more they'll have to say. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. 
If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. You can join us on the radio. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. How about a killer app for Bitcoin? This is the reason, one of the big reasons to get Bitcoin. 20% off or more on whatever pretty much you want to buy from Amazon. There are a few exceptions. I have, uh, like with like third-party sellers, I don't think that Purse works as well. I've tried adding some... Uh, items to a shopping cart testing that but anything that amazon sells anything that you can get through you know the amazon fulfillment where the you know free super saver shipping is offered any of those products so pretty much almost everything on the site is that the things that are used too they do anything in, they, that amazon they do include used items yeah amazon fulfilled uh items include everything that the people the uh merchants send to amazon right to get to off their, their hands. So yeah, they're in their warehouses ready to be shipped out. So pretty much pretty much anything you'd you'd buy through Amazon, you can save 20% using Purse. And you can actually go to purse.freetalklive.com to do that. You just you just go to that URL one time and sign up through it. And then you can go to the regular Purse uh, website through uh, through their regular link afterwards. And everything you buy through Purse, you get a huge discount on. And Free Talk Live gets a very, very small portion of the purchase price. So get started, and then you can get your Bitcoin later. You can just go and get started right now at purse.freetalklive.com. If you've already got some Bitcoin, then get rolling. Start ordering the stuff you would have paid for full price before we told you about this. So we just saved you 20 plus percent. Pretty sweet. Purse.freetalklive.com. Yeah, yeah. J- just send us your money, Ian. Just... Just send us no, water and blankets. We don't. We don't need that. Just what are you send, talking about? I'm doing the bit the the Bush. I don't the, get it during Katrina. George. Oh, George Bush. Yeah. Okay. Send That's, us your send us your money. I don't remember that at all. I mean, I remember Katrina. I don't remember what George Bush was saying. Back they don't. He doesn't want water and blankets. He just wants your money. He really did ask people to send money. Yeah, because it was getting what, confusing. Yeah, it was getting confusing. FEMA didn't want. They already had all the supplies. Uh, the oh, I the see. added supplies yeah. they had to go through them. Is, all right, now we've got some some dirty water. We got dirty blankets. We got to deal with, or well, that's the excuse, of course. Like they need any more money? They're so well funded, and they still were standing in the way during Hurricane Katrina. And remember when they sent the trucks full of ice and water away? This is a pro- this is yeah. exactly in the same line of you know where, my reasoning that I'm that I'm tackling right now. So share your thoughts here tonight. Eight fifty five. 450 free bernie sanders calling for sweeping gun ban story from truthinmedia.com now this is actually i guess he was on tv a couple of weeks ago i had not seen this footage yeah this is this is old stuff ian senator sanders who of course represents pro-gun vermont has built a fairly firearms friendly voting record during his time in the u.s senate after he recently emerged as the 2016 presidential race's standard bearer for the Democratic Party's progressive wing, progressive politicos who oppose gun rights began to complain about Sanders' record on guns. In an apparent primary season about face on Sunday's episode of NBC's Meet the Press, Sanders radically adjusted his position on guns and advocated for a sweeping gun ban that would outlaw most firearms designed for home and self-defense. Now, Conan, you and I, uh, we've got a mutual friend here in town who's uh, kind of a left-leaning dude. He's been friendly to the liberty movement here, but he's recently taken up the mantle of Bernie Sanders. And I heard somebody uh, told him about this gun issue and that he was shocked by it. Every, every, every opportunity that I have, I will uh, throw him these articles. Mm-hmm. I'll be like, look, this is really where he's at. You know he's he is no different than all the other Democrats. Ex- he's more ex- honest, except that he is more honest, and yeah. he's actually coming out and explaining exactly where he stands. He is a socialist. Yeah, not the a socialist m- doesn't have anything to do with gun possession. He's a socialist and an anti-gunner. Well, an anti-some gunner apparently. But, uh, but part of the 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 person that who we are who we are friends with uh, was of the uh, the uh, opinion. That Bernie was all good about the guns. He's like, yeah, right. he's, he's he is pro gun all the way, and he's said that in the past. Except 
two weeks ago on Meet the Press, he's like, hey, I'm all about hunting rifles, but I am not about assault rifles. Here's a quote from what Bernie had to say on that show. Quote, nobody should have a gun who has a criminal background who's involved in domestic abuse situations. Now, I don't know if that means that he's saying no one who has any criminal background or only people who have domestic abuse criminal backgrounds. He said nobody with a criminal background. And then he modifies it by saying, comma, who's involved in domestic abuse situations. It sounds like he's saying anybody with a criminal background shouldn't have a gun, which would, I think, disqualify pretty much uh, a good chunk of the American people. Well, what kind of, yeah, what kind of criminal record? Because I've got one, yep, you've got so one, I. and Mark's got one. So we're all, Jazzy's got one too, and she's going to fight the monsters that are coming to fight us right now. <laughs> he says people should not have guns who are going to hurt other people who are unstable. And that's not a bad thing right. to say, I, right? If you can uh, if if you can, you know, get a crystal ball and figure yeah. out who's going to hurt people, absolutely. Um, you know, let's go into this fantasy world where we can predict who's going to hurt people and who's going to be unstable. Um, the, you know, the human beings, they can be unstable at any time. But again, what does he mean because I have a gun to defend myself to hurt people if they try to hurt me first. That is what you'll do with a gun, that's for sure. What, that's why I have it. And so is he also considering that option? Because that's why I have the stupid thing. Well, we also know that the police are going to likely hurt other people, and they have guns. And in fact, that's generally what their job is. A lot of them have tasers, too, but they hardly ever seem to use them. It's the silliest thing. And second of all, he says, I believe that we need to make sure that certain types of guns used to kill people exclusively, not for hunting, they should not be sold in the United States of America. And we have a huge loophole now with gun shows that should be eliminated. Yeah, yeah a lot of people don't like the gun shows, but, um, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, guns are for a couple of things. They're for hunting uh, they're for protecting yourself, maybe against wild animals. The rare instance you might carry a handgun and to hike in the woods and you know protect protect yourself against cougars and bears and things like that. And they're for protecting your house. And to s the Second Amendment, if you look at the history of it, to some extent, the Second Amendment is to protect you from your government. Um, that's sort of the purpose. That's of why it's the Second <laughs> Amendment and not the fifteenth or the twentieth. It's the Second. Amendment. That's how important these guys thought that it was uh, to pre protect yourself from tyrannical governments, that they put it in the second place. So you got free speech and then you got mm -hmm. your guns. I mean, it's 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 a no brainer. It's not about setting up your own militia. It's not about out there hunting coons, you know, or what are you, you know, raccoons. raccoons. It's 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 a no brainer for real. The uh, Senator Sanders here is apparently the front runner. In New Hampshire for the Democratic primary. Oh, yeah. the last absolutely. The last I saw. So, you know, this guy, some people, when he got into the race, they thought, oh, isn't that cute? Oh, the Vermont senator is going to run for, uh, you know, run as a Democrat here. And he's doing pretty well. In fact, Chris Cantwell went and saw him speak when he came here to Keene. He actually sat in there the entire time. I had no interest in doing it. I sat outside the entire time mm -hmm. and waited for him to come out. Uh, but Campbell actually went in, watched, and recorded the entire speech, and he says this guy is a great orator. Like he is an excellent speaker. He's he's engaging to the audience. He's a good manner of speaking. And he's got the crazy eyes. Well, I, he's, I don't know. He's seventy-five. Okay, um, I think that you know one of the things about uh, you remember Ron Paul. He can't get elected. Well, Because he's too old? Is that the idea? I, well, one of the reasons I think Ron Paul couldn't get elected was he was one of the oldest guys on the ballot. And Ron Paul was a, is a fitness nut. He's still around. You can, yeah, you he's can in good shape. Yeah, he could probably ride all of those other knuckleheads, them young Democrats, or, I'm sorry, Republicans, or whatever the hell whatever they are. Whatever they are. Same uh, thing. He could probably run them all down the drain. Didn't he do like a triathlon or something crazy <laughs> like that, right? Or like a 10-mile bike ride one day during but the, the campaign? Bernie Sanders has Yeah, but the other libertarian did too. What's his name? Gary Johnson. Gary Johnson, yeah, he's yeah. a lot younger, though. Yeah, Gary Johnson is a lot younger. But Bernie Sanders hasn't done that. He's going to be 75 years old okay. um, when the election's going on. And Ron That'll Paul's him, turning 80, right? That'll make him six and a half years older than Reagan, who went, uh, who you know, dementia overtook him while he was in office. <laughs> so this is something that uh, the, the Bernie Sanders campaign has to, to work with. Also, fundraising isn't going as well for Sanders as it is for Clinton. Um and you know what's going to happen. The Clinton machine's going to kick in mm. and say, hey, Sanders, you want to be Secretary of State or something? Mm. And he's going to be like, yeah, that's all I can really manage to do.
You can share your thoughts here. 855-450 free. This is Free Talk Live. If you could choose any school in the country to earn your college degree and be on your way to a better life, would you choose one the Wall Street Journal recognizes as producing some of the best qualified graduates? Or one the Princeton Review ranks as a leader in undergraduate education? Or maybe one the U.S. News & World Report names among the most innovative schools in the country? Now, you don't have to choose. At Arizona State University, we want to help you learn to thrive in life. At ASU Online, we offer over 100 graduate and undergraduate programs on your time and schedule. You receive the exact same curriculum, degree, and prestigious faculty as the on-campus students, and we're universally recognized as one of the innovators in online learning technologies. For information, call 1-800-595-9736. U.S. News & World Report ranked ASU in the top 10 best places to earn an online degree. So learn to thrive with ASU Online. Call today at 1-800-595-9736. That's 1-800-595-9736. We, we, we are a survival company. We manufacture our own line of Level 3 and Level 3A body armor. We proudly make our armor 100% in America. We have the best prices in the nation, about $125 cheaper than our nearest competitor. All lab certified, for thou art my rock and my fortress, Psalm 31.3. We are Fortress Survival, LLC. Dot, dot, dot com. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. Physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, and you can share your thoughts with us here on the radio at 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733, Bitcoinist.net. It is the ultimate resource for Bitcoin industry news, reviews, education, and the latest in the cryptocurrency ecosystem. At Bitcoinist.net, there is a community forum that's been integrated, breaking uh, Bitcoin and digital currency news 
plus fintech and blockchain tech news as well. Bitcoinist has very sophisticated Bitcoin network statistics, a solid beginner's guide to Bitcoin, and more. The Bitcoinist platform serves the need of everyone who's looking to keep up with Bitcoin and digital currencies from beginners to experts. Go to Bitcoinist.net. That's Bitcoinist.net. So I went to court today. It's actually been a little while since I've been in a courthouse. A few weeks. And uh, it's a long time for you. Shire Dude. Yeah, was... you had to drive all the way to Manchester. Well, I didn't have to. Well, I mean, I mean it, to, in order to get some yes. uh, some ch- some choice court news. Yeah, well, you know, uh, I am I like going to support people in court because I feel like, you know, if I want somebody to come support me, I should go out there and, and put it out there, right? I should go and support people in court. So that's what I do. And it's kind of a, a hobby. It's become a weird hobby of mine. So I get a lot of court footage. And today I was expecting to see an entertaining trial of Shire Dude, who is an entertaining kind of guy. In fact, he's going to be heading up the uh, the media panel at this year's uh, Keenvention, which I'm very excited about. You mean the panel that I used to head, head up? Remember you back headed I, up one year. Remember back when I used to head up the media panel? You mean the one year you headed, headed it up? King yes. Mark heads up the media panel, 2014. <laughs> you remember the, the, the most- He wasn't king back then. The apparently. most viewed video of all the panels. Ooh, and, no, uh, I don't think that's the most viewed. I'm pretty sure Chris Cantwell's- uh, That's one a panel from, speech. No, actually he had a panel uh, peace, peace roundtable with me and Derek J. That's in not a panel, that's a debate. Yeah, well, well, wait, is, was it from the actual hour a panel, or was and it that like was it was it like a cut five no, minute piece? No, the full the full one. And I didn't hmm. say all time; it was from my. Um, oh, year. I see. Okay, gotcha. So anyway, I went to support Shire Dude today at his what was supposed to be a trial. It was actually continued the last time when we were in court to support him a few months ago. They continued his trial date as well as everyone else in the courtroom. And the reason they claimed they were doing this, because it was just parking tickets, which parking ticket trials are not complicated trials. I'm no attorney, yeah, but I could prosecute one of these trials. Yeah, they're <laughs> usually not trials. They usually never happen. Uh, 95, 95 to 99 percent of them go to the uh, right to the window and they get they paid. Get yeah, they get paid. And uh, p- paying your ticket is a plea. You're pleading mm-hmm. guilty. You're paying the fine. You're making it go away. Uh, Shire Dude had three tickets for overnight parking in uh, Manchester in the wintertime. There is a rule that says, I don't know what the rule is, and this is why a bunch of people get caught by it. But uh, yeah, on it's, certain it's here, nights. It's here as well. It's It depends on their snow removal nights. And actually, is it I think here? I, oh, yeah. Because in, in Keene, New Hampshire, where we're doing the show, there's a rule that says you can't park on the streets from November 1st to May 1st after 1 a.m. at night. Right. Any street. Right. In Manchester, they'll let you park on one side or the other based on which night of the week that it is. Ooh, confusing. And so this screws people up because they don't know which night it, you know, they, you know who knows what these government laws say. So happens, yeah. You know, they get and they get people all the time. Especially if your name is the, the Shire dude. I mean, yeah. I mean, you probably don't know what year it is. They got they get people all the time for these tickets in Manchester, and they're a heftier ticket than you'll get for parking uh here in Keene as well. So he was facing like $75 in fines for three of these these tickets. And so uh, what happened the first time was they claimed that the prosecutor was sick, but he wasn't the only prosecutor. So they had a prosecutor there. It's just that mm. this prosecutor who was there, for whatever reason, she didn't want to do the, uh, the the parking ticket case or any any of the other cases in the courtroom. So they, they, dis- they uh, continued everybody's cases. And we, we got some really interesting footage that happened at that time, and Shire Dude has that. So I would look forward to a very entertaining video to come out of this, of the sort of the courtroom shenanigans and the things that the court security were trying to do to us. There was one point where court security, as we were coming in, one of the security officers who obviously had this mentality of, I'm in charge here, he gathered everybody around so he could lecture to them about what the rules are about having a camera in court, because, you know, there's all these new free staters and liberty activists who are in this building, many of whom aren't court regulars, because there's just not that much court in, yeah. in Manchester. And so this, you know, this it, large and in charge security man, he was fairly tall as well. He wanted to just let everybody know what the rules were. And so as he was yammering just on, so I just... so you recalcitrants know yeah. what the rules are, there'll be no cameras in the yeah. hallways. There'll be no that cameras kind of in the bathrooms. Yep. Be... 
and he yeah, and he literally did have exactly what he wanted, like a semi, sort of like a semicircle or half circle of people. Any misunderstand what I'm saying here? Yeah, circling around him, just sort of <laughs> taking in his every word. And after he started in for about 30 seconds, I just walked away. <laughs> I don't need to listen to this. I'm not obligated to stand here and listen to this man. And so I went in and I set up. Anyway, so it got uh, postponed until today. We showed up and I was surprised by what actually happened. It's rare that, you know, you get surprised in court. Usually it's a pretty routine thing and what happens happens and they call you to trial and then you go to trial and you get convicted. Yeah. That's how it goes. Um, in this case, the trial never happened. The prosecutor, when he came in, and they didn't keep us waiting long. Last time, we waited two hours for the judge to show up. Oh, yeah, they the make, you, was, make you suffer. He was two hours late, and it was ridiculous. This time, the judge never even came in. The prosecutor comes in, makes a, you know, goes straight to his desk. First case he calls, Andrew Vermilio. That's uh, Shire Dude's uh, legal name. So he... Uh, you know, Shire Dude says, yep, that's me, and of course I get this on video because you want to make sure you keep everything on the record. Prosecutor says, my understanding is you are willing to pay this fine to a charity. Now, this is what Shire Dude had told them in court the last time. Right. Mm -hmm. And this dude wasn't there the last time. So somebody informed him about Shire Dude's offer. He was well informed about that. He said, okay, if you're willing to pay $75 to a charity— uh, you can do that, and we'll go ahead and uh, put this on file, and you will agree to not commit any misdemeanors or felonies or major motor vehicle violations for the next year, and it'll be wiped off your record. And Shire Dude agreed to uh, to the deal. And, After- by, and, and by the way, what are the penalties for uh, any uh, uh, you know infractions of the law during that one-year period? Well, they could bring back the, the charge. The, the whole thing right back. Yeah. So, all right, So he and what uh, charity did he choose? He chose the- Shire Sharing. Cool. Which is a uh, liberty-oriented charity that helps feed people during the Thanksgiving holiday. You know, I did something very similar about two years ago. I asked, uh, uh, basically, I asked the forgiveness. I said, hey, look, I I won't do this again if you just, you know, cut me a break. And they're like, all right, well, if you don't do it again in four months, you're all good. Was that the bike thing? No, no, no. That was, no, that was a parking ticket. Okay. That was that was my only parking ticket here in Keene. I I don't it. I don't ever park in the parking spots. I park up the road and I walk to wherever I have to go. And so they wiped it. Oh yeah, it's it's clean. You know you don't get it if you don't ask for it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the things you can take away from this experience. Uh, and I was what I was surprised about was I've had uh, the ability to give money to a charity to take care of a fine. So in lieu of the, paying the fine to the court, I have paid charities, and in some cases I've given more. I would I'll say like. Well, you know, it's ten dollars for this fine. I'll give fifty dollars to the local food bank. Or you don't want to look cheap. Like that. Yeah. Um, and plus, it puts the court in the position of, well, you know, do we wa- do we want to look greedy right. by accepting ten dollars into true. the court system, whereas we could have, you know, had a local charity been given fifty dollars. And so, uh, you know, that normally happens after a trial. I never thought to ask in advance. Uh, in in most of these trials, but that's what Shire Dude did. He in, indicated he wanted to do this, and so they avoided the entire trial process. And by the way, in my case, I didn't ask for forgiveness right off the top. I just took it to court, and they mm-hmm. they offered it to me. And I'm like, well, I I I guess that sounds all right. Okay, I'll take it. But, so you but, never went to trial. They offered oh no, that to I you went I went to pretrial and I went to trial. Okay, okay. So I so it involved me waking up early in the morning and I think the pretrial was pretty pretty lengthy. I probably sat there for an hour or so, uh, and the trial might have been just as long. But uh, yeah, sometimes they they handle you right off the bat and maybe if they know you're coming and they know who you're affiliated with and they mm-hmm. know that's going to be recorded, uh, you might have the opportunity to get your case taken care of real quick, like. Here in Keene, they started something. I don't know if they still do it, but they would actually have a uh, free Keener court in a separate room. <laughs> <laughs> First off, the judge yeah, would handle it. Yeah, sharp. The, the, yeah. As soon as the judge walked in the building, he was pretty much handling this situation in another room, and then so he would the, go handle the rest of the populace, which right. was— So the regulars don't see you. Right. And of course, that it was gives them the opportunity to sort of save face and you know do their thing because they know that the average citizen isn't watching your videos. So you know, it's it's a way to just kind of move you, shoot you off to the side. Yeah, it, it was a really interesting uh, day in court. There are a couple other things worth sharing about it coming up here. We'll do that, and you can share your thoughts. Eight fifty five four fifty free plus some other good news on deck. This is Free Talk Live. 
If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. Geico applauds your inner road name. A slow clap goes out to your biker alter ego. You might be mild-mannered Michael in the office, the guy known for raising his hand in meetings, but out on the open road, it's Motor Mike. Geico supports you and your bike, Motor Mike, because beyond cars, Geico insures motorcycles, those glorious vroom vroom machines. With 24-7 customer service and great rates, the only thing you'll be raising from now on is a heck of a good time. So head out on the highway and make that road yours, Mike. Make it yours. Geico Motorcycle. See how much you could save. This is your Robertson Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Tuesday, gold is down $2 at $1,113 per ounce. Silver is down $0.53 cents at $14.86 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at $253 U.S. dollars. Looking for a way to sit out the Bitcoin fork? Robertson Roberts can convert your Bitcoin to silver. Visit us online at rrbi.co or give us a call at 800-874-9760. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, August 18th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.09 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,118 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $258. Antiwar.com reports the governor of the southern Yemeni port city of Aden, currently occupied by the pro-Saudi forces of the government in exile of Yemen, said the city will be declared the nation's official capital for the next five years and will be the focus of all reconstruction in the country in that period. Aden was the capital city of South Yemen through 1990 when the territory was annexed by North Yemen and has been the center of an active secessionist movement in recent years. The decision to make this the national capital, even on a temporary basis, could set up a conflict with that movement. The more immediate concern, however, is whether this suggests the pro-Saudi faction envisions the war lasting so long they need a new capital for half a decade. The capital of Sana'a is under control of the Shiite Houthi movement and has been under siege by Saudi airstrikes for months. Officials from the pro-Saudi faction had suggested they believe the momentum is theirs and that they can take back the rest of the country in short order. If that was really the case, however, they probably would not be looking to replace Sanaa with a new capital for several years to come. In Survivor Max by Davi Barker, 11-year-old Max must survive the zombie apocalypse alone in New Hampshire. Slow-moving and non-thinking, the lame brains swarm his home searching for living flesh. Max must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to plan his escape, but first he must prove that he's too smart to die. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook and Amazon or read Chapter 1 free at SurvivorMax.com. UPI reports the National Labor Relations Board on Monday blocked Northwestern University football players from becoming the first union of college athletes. The board did not rule on whether athletes should be considered employees of the school who have the right to unionize, instead citing the fact that labor law only allows the board to rule on private sector workplaces. The board said in the ruling statement, the board held that asserting jurisdiction over a single team would not promote stability in labor relations across the league. National College Players Association 
Association Executive Director Ramogi Huma filed a petition in 2014 with the board along with cards signed by an undisclosed number of players indicating they wished to be represented by the union. Huma, who played football at UCLA and helped form the NCPA in 2001, said the unionization movement had the support of the United Steelworkers Union. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports the Internal Revenue Service said Monday a hacking attack into one of the computer's databases revealed in May was much more extensive than previously thought, with nearly three times as many taxpayers hit by data theft. The IRS said in late May the tax return information of about 114,000 U.S. taxpayers had been illegally accessed by cyber criminals over the preceding four months, with another 111,000 unsuccessful attempts made. The new review has identified 220. 20,000 additional incidents where data was breached. The tax collection agency said it identified another 170,000 suspected failed attempts by third parties to gain access to taxpayer data. The agency said in a statement, the IRS believes some of this information may have been gathered for potentially filing fraudulent tax returns during the upcoming 2016 filing season. It added that it will soon begin mailing letters in the next few days to the taxpayers whose accounts may have been accessed, offering them free credit monitoring monitoring and a new personal identification number to verify the authenticity of next year's tax returns. In May, the agency said that as a result of the breach, some 15,000 fraudulent returns were processed in the 2015 tax filing season, likely resulting in refunds of less than $50 million. An IRS official said the agency was reviewing whether the number of fraudulent returns had grown due to more extensive data breaches, but that requires a manual review of the individual returns. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. An update now on a legal battle emerging around the Onion News Network's own Jode Kressbeckler. After the shocking story yesterday that a group of assailants attacked Congressman William Cummings, tied him to a horse, and dragged him through a briar patch, some are now saying these statements from Mr. Kressbeckler last week may have incited the attack. Boat-legging Congressman Cummings ought to be tied to a horse and drug through a briar patch. Mr. Kressbeckler's show is billed as an opinion and entertainment program. Yes, it And is. he even calls himself nothing but a caterwauling old badger, so right. the claim that he would incite people to violence seems pretty far-fetched. He displayed a map of Congressman Cummings' home in relation to the nearest briar patch, told his viewers where to purchase a, quote, good pulling horse, and used a life-size dummy of Congressman Cummings to demonstrate effective knot-tying techniques. Right. You know, I think most reasonable people would see that as simply a rippled political satire. Right. Br briar patch is obviously a metaphor for the prickly political atmosphere in Washington, and drag from a horse means something else. Makes sense to me. This is the Onion News Network. Toll free to join us here on the radio. 855-450-FREE is our number. That's 855-450-3733. And joining you in studio tonight, you've got Ian. And Conan. And Mark. Uh, so we were talking about court. Uh, I went there today to support Shire Dude, who you probably have heard on the air on this program in the past. He's actually been a, a guest co-host. And I think his website, ShireDude.com. Entertaining kind of media personality guy. He's very talented video he's uh, silly. editor. Yeah, he's not afraid to be silly, and I appreciate that. Um, but he, I was really looking forward to this trial. I thought it was going to be entertaining. Last time Shire Dude went into this courtroom in Manchester, New Hampshire, he actually wore like a mushroom cap. He has this red and white uh, mushroom hat that he was wearing. Like sort of a Mario kind of mushroom? Yeah, yeah, like exactly. That? Imagine, imagine that's a perfect vision for what this looked like. And he was sitting there with, at the, with the plumber's mustache and the whole nine. So he he's does have a mustache, yeah. really playing the part. Um, and so, yeah, it was really entertaining because this judge in this courtroom doesn't care about hats. So he was able to wear this silly hat uh, in court, which is, you know, fun because we've actually had people. 
be arrested for wearing hats in court. So there's a huge discrepancy in what one judge will allow, what another judge won't. Yep. So it's interesting to see those things play out. But his trial was postponed until today, and it never actually ended up happening. So I was a little disappointed that the trial didn't transpire because I thought it would be entertaining to see Shire Dude, you know, cross-examining these parking enforcers and, you know, put them on the stand, make them work for it. Ultimately, though, what... Yeah, and get them off the street for a couple of hours. Exactly. Ultimately, though, what Shire Dude's goal was was to pay the fine, which he figured he was going to be found guilty anyway, so he'd be fined. So what if he could pay it to a charity, as I have done in the past, and I think other activists have successfully done that. I've done it a couple of times at least, maybe two or three and he did end up getting to pay the fine to charity, but he didn't have to go to trial. He actually took a plea that included him paying the fine to charity rather than to the state parking enforcement or to the, the city's parking enforcement department, which was a big deal. I'd never seen that happen before today. So apparently you can negotiate paying a fine to charity before a trial even happens, negotiate it as part of the plea bargaining process. Now... Did he get the best possible outcome? No. And the best possible outcome, the thing is you can't compare apples to apples in the court system because you can't redo it. You, you know, it's never the exact same case right. twice. It's a plea so, deal. Yeah. And a deal is a deal, right? Yeah. You can't go back and see what would have transpired otherwise. But here's what could have happened had he not taken the deal. And again, he was happy with it. Everybody was satisfied with it. In fact, when he was offered to him, he made sure this prosecutor read it multiple times just to make sure he was clear that there wasn't some sort of hidden catch gotcha. or whatever. And then he actually turns to the audience and he asks, should he take the deal? And so we all just kind of raised our hands. And in fact, one of the court security like officers, to, like, take a lifeline. one of the court security officers also raised his hand and <laughs> suggested that he take the deal. Um, so what would it, what could have happened? Well, what could have happened is that the uh, parking enforcers weren't there. So there's a very real possibility that they figured that he would take this offer mm. and they didn't call those parking enforcers in and or the parking enforcers were unavailable. Whoa, 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 whoa. The parking enforcers weren't there this morning? They were not in the courtroom for this supposed trial that they were, if the trial had gone ahead, so they would have been required. So why didn't he insist on his accusers being involved um, in the court he could have he, he could have had the whole thing thrown he out he could have had the whole thing thrown out but he instead took the deal which uh you which know, which doesn't hurt it's not it's not it's you know he is expecting to pay this fine anyway yeah. so the fact that he is going to pay it to the charity was his win for today he felt good about that and i'm not i don't want to take anything away from him on that i'm just saying this is an option you know that it could have been that he could have walked out of there with no charges uh, that, uh, the, you know, if, for instance, if they were to call the case and then he were to go up to the uh, the defendant's table and they call in the first witness, Susie's, uh, you know, Susie ma meter maid, come up to the, the front here and she's not there, motion to dismiss. Yeah. And that exactly. case will be dismissed. Well, that's one, that one, one of my first trials here in Keene was exactly that. Uh, Pre-trial, guy was there, put my case down, went to trial, guy never showed up. Wasn't there. And so you got it dismissed. You got him dismissed. It's it's that easy. Right. So they ended up actually getting him under this plea agreement, which agrees, you know, you won't get a felony, you won't get a misdemeanor, major motor vehicle violation, which obviously he doesn't have the intention to do those things. But should something like that happen to him in the next year, they can bring back this parking ticket. Now, whether they will or not is Unlikely. another question, but they could if they wanted to. So it wasn't the optimal turnout, but it was an interesting one and a unique one, one I'd never seen before. Was so congratulations any, to him for was that. Was there any way for him to know that the meter maids weren't there, or is this just sort of They're a, usually standing they're, out in the door in the right, hallway situation. waiting because they're not allowed to come in until exactly. they're called. Yeah, they sit in the pews waiting for the trial just like everybody else. Uh, so in the last hearing that he had, the one in which they continued to today, mm -hmm. the meter maids were there. And because there were so three tickets. So just none of you guys noticed this? So just nobody thought about it? Um, I, you know, I might have noticed it, but I didn't bring it up. I mean, he was elated to have this offer made to him <laughs> that, you know, he could pay the fine to the, to the charity, which is what he had the intention of, 
well, having he asked done. the room, and it sounds like the room failed the guy, right? <laughs> you know, like all you guys are there, and nobody noticed. Hey, you know, there's not a meter maid in sight. Um, no, don't take the deal. The meter maids aren't here. Give seventy five dollars to the charity and tell the prosecutor to stuff it. <laughs> Yeah, well, Mark, you could have come. And, I could have. Uh, right? <laughs> I probably wouldn't have noticed because I wouldn't know who the meter maids were. I would have been, been looking for it. Yeah, he was getting what he wanted. I mean, he, I hear you. you know, it was a. It seemed like a really good thing to him. I did point it out afterwards that maybe there could have been a better outcome, but he was very satisfied in the in the post interview that we did outside. And that's you know, if if you can go away from a situation like that feeling like you've you know you've won the day, even though you really didn't. Uh, that's you know, that's not a bad thing. That's them. Uh, they've won too. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you got to give them they some like credit. They like to walk here. away happy. This was yeah. a smart move on their part. You know, I'm looking at uh, uh, English wigs here on Amazon. I think I'm going to get one of these so f- for when I run for city council. You're talking about f- like what? Like somebody would wear in an old English court, court or something? Courtroom, exactly. Okay. These things are awesome. I could totally. Uh, Bedeck one of these things. I've got a really cheap one, Conan. If you want, I can bring it down for you. You can wear it tonight here on the show. It looks let's, ridiculous. Let's, let's get it after the next break and see <laughs> and see how it works. I got one that came in a judge's outfit, one of those cheap uh, Halloween costumes. They really, I only wanted it for the robe, but it came with a just ridiculous headpiece or yes. hairpiece or whatever you call it. I mean, things. for some reason, these guys really. Um, well, I mean, they had all the authority of the land, and their their wigs were the proof of it, right? It looked very fancy. It's all about hats. Uh, oh, and they had glasses. A lot of them had, had the spectacles on. Too. Spectacles. That's how you can tell someone's smart. They've got yeah, glasses. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Blair is on the line in Utah. You're on Free Talk Live listening to KZNU. Hello, Blair. Hi. Hello. How are you guys doing? Welcome, sir. Go ahead. Good. Thank you. Hey, I have a question uh, that baffles me. You always speak about uh, doing time and so on and issues in the past which I can appreciate, but the thing that boggles my mind is your educational background because obviously you are all very well educated and very well spoken, and I appreciate that uh, very much, and you're very current on issues and ideas, and, and I love that. So just wondering about that, if you could inform me on that, I'd be very appreciative. I don't think there's a bachelor's among us. Um, no, I got an associate's, and I wish I hadn't wasted my time. I've got I've got four, I've got four years. Uh, really? No, uh, no degree. Okay, you cut out early. I just was I was always changing around, and you know I, I'm I'm always curious, and mm-hmm. every time I see I saw something new, I would jump on it, and I never got the, the degree. Never the, stuck with it. Yeah, and now yeah. and and now I can't afford to finish a degree. It's just it's not worth it to yeah, me. It's not worth it. I um, I'm that some college uh, you know category too. I read a lot of classics while I was uh, incarcerated, and um, you know <laughs> what can I tell you? I got my education in the big house. Uh, well, and and the internet. I mean, the internet's great if I have yeah. you know. I, well, what about mainly it's curiosity at this right, point. There's no. What, what about to... the younger years? Because I have private, uh, private government and. Uh, you went to a very special I was school? I was all I was all over the place. <laughs> Blair, thanks for your call tonight, man. I appreciate hearing from you. I went to the so-called gifted school. Ah, that, was yeah. it a, was it a magnet school? <laughs> yeah, I think you could call it that. Yeah. Uh 855 450 magnet for snobs. Free. Yeah. This is Free Talk Live. <laughs> <laughs> this is a life-changing message for anyone with sleep apnea who is on the go and tired of dragging around a big, bulky home CPAP device. MiniCPAP.com now offers a portable device that's as small as a soda can and weighs less than a pound. For even more freedom, you can add a battery that's as tiny as a deck of cards. It's called the Transcend Mini CPAP, and right now you can try it risk-free for 21 days by calling 1-800-939-8536. Transcend is the world's first portable mini CPAP device. It gives you the freedom to sleep in total comfort anywhere you are. Our smallest and most advanced portable design ever. Transcend is so small and so light you can fit it in your briefcase or purse to use anywhere you go. It's FAA compliant too, so you can even sleep comfortably while flying. Enjoy the freedom to sleep comfortably anywhere. Call minicpap.com now for your 21-day in-home trial. 1-800-939-8536. That's 1-800-939-8536. Hi, this is Walt Augustinowitz. I'm the founder and CEO of ID Stronghold. By now you've heard our commercials about wallets that protect you from electronic pickpocketing. 
Ten years ago, I created a way to protect my own cards from prying eyes after government officials started talking about issuing a national ID card with a built-in radio chip called RFID. I felt having to broadcast my personal information was an invasion of privacy. Soon after, it was also announced that credit cards, debit cards, U.S. passports, hotel room keys, and even transit passes would all soon incorporate RFID. It was then I formed ID Stronghold to share my inventions in blocking RFID signals with the world. There are a lot of misconceptions out there today about RFID. I encourage everyone to get informed and get protected. Please go to IDStronghold.com and get the facts and the wallet, sleeves, or badge holders you need to protect your personal financial data. You'll be pleasantly surprised that through our direct sales model, you won't pay more than other comparable unprotected wallets. It is as though the protection is free. Visit IDStronghold.com today. Keenvention is coming up October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. Explore Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel from 2013 on. This year, Activist of the Year Daryl W. Perry and Chris Cantwell will be keynoting. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenevention this October 30th through November 1st. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or pay with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Hallow Keen Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at Keenevention.info. Visit Keenevention.info for more speaker announcements or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenevention.info. Keenevention.info. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You're welcome to join us here on the radio waves. Bring up what you want, whether it's your experience in court, your thoughts about Bernie Sanders and his opinions on guns. Anything goes here. 855 450 free. If Bernie Sanders promises us another season of Firefly, he's got my vote in the general. Ooh, now that would be interesting. That's a lot better than the rest of I mean, the crap that he's offering. <laughs> he's making a lot of promises. 855-450-3733. But will it be free, Mark? Will it be free Firefly or will we have to pay for it? A special <laughs> subscription on a, on what is what uh Amazon, Cable. Amazon Prime or some crap. I uh I'm I'm running against him as a write-in and I've been really? promising double what he, what he offers. Um so here I I'll just go right down right down now and say I I'm willing to give two seasons of Firefly. That's All right. a big well, promise. Uh Mark, you got my vote. There you go. I didn't Two's, know you were a big Firefly fan. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know. I wasn't. I don't understand the big uh, the big scene. I was always a Farscape fan, which was also uh, ended prematurely. Prematurely, it, yeah. It only went four seasons. Firefly was all too, it was too western-y. It was like the, the theme song and the whole, yeah. all the you outfits. like westerns? And, I don't dislike westerns, but why? I mean, I think the somebody was, obviously liked westerns. <laughs> well, it was uh, to some extent you were talking about people pioneering other planets. Yeah. So it had a pioneering feel um, to it, and, and they many, were and they were they were uh, black marketers. They were always right, you yeah. know. 
I don't was, know. To some extent, it was Han Solo who was uh, packaged for television. Yeah, he without, even looks like Han it, with Solo. Jane was uh, was chewy without the costume. And, and, you know. <laughs> yeah, there are, are no new ideas, are there? Let's go to Tom <laughs> listening in Maryland. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Tom. Good evening, gentlemen. Welcome. I just wanted to let you know that if your friend uh, went to court today, he can amend any of his testimony this evening or tomorrow morning and turn it into the court in the form of an affidavit with the case number, simply stating what he thought the terms were. Now, if the court chooses, a lot of times they don't, to answer his affidavit, changing his testimony and what he believed the agreement was, for instance, the year that he's on quote-unquote probation, if he thinks that, well, you know what, I, I really didn't, that came too quick. Uh, I really didn't mean to agree to that. Uh, I was thinking that if the parking agents came in and and there was testimony given, then I'd be on that probation. But really, you know, I'm just giving to the charity. And if the court disagrees with this, then, you know, give the court X number of days to answer. And how how long does he have to do all this? How many days? 30 days? Oh, he should he should do it um, as you know post haste as soon as possible. Um, you know, if he does it, if he files it tomorrow, Tom may not be an attorney, and he's not giving legal advice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Tom, I uh, I was there when this plea deal occurred, and we're, you're referring to Shire Dude's what was supposed to be a trial today, and ended up not being a trial because he uh, got an agreement with the prosecutor that he did agree to, and he was very, very clear with the prosecutor, so I don't think he could make the claim that he was unclear as to what the terms of the agreement were. He went over it multiple times. And probably signed uh, a piece of paper as well. And signed it in, in front of him. I mean, what, I hear, what I'm hearing you say is there's some way to reverse that after the fact. I'm not denying that there might be some sort of method of, you know, like you're saying, putting in an affidavit saying, oh, I didn't really understand the terms, and so I'm rescinding my agreement of course i don't know why ian i mean do you really understand the uh the, the law you know and how well no you could certainly say you don't understand the law or anything about the system i'm not saying you couldn't try this i just it's just going to end up giving him another day in court and that's not what he wants he wants to be done with this right so right. now I, he's going to cut the check and that's going to be it i understand he, he might not realize also that absent a sworn affidavit from the parking agents there was no uh testimony or evidence presented whatsoever of course not trial didn't happen yep right so that was the point i was making earlier was that by taking this deal he prevented himself from being able to find out what they were going to present at trial which it was looking as though the parking enforcers weren't even in the building at that point now they could have made him wait they could have uh, let's it let's say he you know optimal circumstance would be they would have called him to trial the parking enforcers weren't there motion to dismiss case dismissed but that's not necessarily how it would have played out if he didn't take that plea deal they could have made him sit there and wait just like they made him wait the last week that he was there like a few couple months ago he sat in court for 2 hours waiting on that judge to show up so if they wanted to they could say oh well he's going he's not going to take this plea deal that we just offered him all right well we'll just sit in here until uh, 3:30 it was 1 o'clock when we we were supposed to be in there. We'll sit there till 3.30, and we'll give the parking enforcers a chance to finish up their shift and then come on over here yeah, later on. finish up their lunch yeah, and we'll come, do. In, come in at their own their own uh, time. So just because they weren't there at that moment didn't mean they sh for sure would not be there for the trial. Go ahead. I just always, br I just always bristle when I hear about tethers and the, the year to be good, yeah. um, you know, or they're going to bring it back. You know, just like yeah, probation, anything like that it is – it's just something that they use to, to keep you hooked. There's no and, doubt about uh, that. I didn't like that either. Have you ever either. seen anybody get a suspended sentence, um, have a suspended sentence here amongst the activist community in New Hampshire, and that suspended sentence be brought back? No. I haven't seen it once. No, I haven't seen that happen either. Hey, but Tom's right, though. I mean, I agree. I don't like the idea of you use the term tether. I don't like the idea of those things either. And I bet you something else that Shire Jude could have done in that moment was to try to negotiate that away. Because remember, everything's... Uh, you're contracting all the time, right. and that's exactly what you're doing when you walk into that courtroom. Yeah. In fact, they did negotiate something that changed on the contract or the agreement, and, and it had said to a charity 
and Shire Dude specified which charity he wanted to give the money to, and the prosecutor was like, well, I wanted to leave that open for you. And Shire Dude specified that the man write down Shire sharing on the agreement. So mm. they literally crossed out what the prosecutor had written there, and the prosecutor wrote in Shire sharing there instead. So everything is subject to negotiation. Had Shire Dude wanted to, he could have said to the prosecutor, well, I appreciate your offer that I could pay this uh, $75 to charity, but I don't appreciate having this string attached to where if I get a misdemeanor, which is super easy to get in America these days, that yep. you could then bring this charge back. How about this? Spinning I'll give in public. This, yeah, I'll give, this, I'll give $85 to charity and no, none of the strings attached. How about that? And he could have done that, and the prosecutor could have balked and said, well, kid, we're going to trial, or, you know, okay, sure, let's do it. So. Yeah, if both be understood and everything was done in good faith, then you're going to maybe see these people again. But probably best to leave it be. I think so. Thanks, Tom, for the call tonight. I appreciate it. And that's the thing with New Hampshire. You're going to see these people again if you're an activist <laughs> and, and you're you know out there and you're willing to do this kind of stuff. The, the people in the Manchester courts may not have known who Shire Dude was prior to him coming into the courtroom. They certainly know who he is now, and they knew that he was a Liberty guy because all the entourage was there with him. I was there. Derek J. was there. We both had our, our video cameras. It's pretty clear something's going on. As plain as the nose on your face. Yeah, it's pretty clear uh, You know, something's happening, and they ought to uh, you know, approach things differently. And, and kudos to them. I think they made a smart move in court today. When they do the um, the the soft uh, the soft method with you guys, it almost always turns out better for them. Yeah, and I think it was good for the court too, because or the courtroom, because people were there watching this happen, and they were the same people who were there the last time who also got that's their right, cases continued, right. and those people were pissed last time, uh, and so they got to see him make this deal to pay charity, and I suggested to one of the other guys, hey man. You could do the same thing if you get found guilty. We're coming up on Free Talk Live. We the people grow cotton, wheat fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit, then carting to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Okay, open your mouth and say, ah. Uh. Getting a good view of a sore throat can be difficult, but the new doctor-recommended sore throat exam kit from SayAhNow.com makes it easy. A first-of-its-kind scientifically designed oral retractor to relax the tongue, minimize gag reflex, and increase visibility. Our Made in the USA kit also includes a medical-grade reference chart, easy-to-use website and apps so that you're one click away from unparalleled sore throat information. Click SayAhNow.com. SayAhNow.com. A must-have for your family's medical preparedness. Email is easy, instant, and free, and that can be real embarrassing. Email lacks the eye contact and body language you get in face-to-face -face conversation, or the tone of voice and other nuance you hear in a telephone conversation. Email is just words, often few words. We're all smothering in spam, so we often reply in terse fashion that's easy to misunderstand. And email doesn't cost you a postage stamp, and it lacks the deliberation time it'd take to walk to the snail mailbox so it's easy to succumb to the oh yeah stimulus response trap when in doubt don't snap back at snippy messages you get you may have mistaken the sender's intent and unless you're sending AOL to AOL there's no unsend for more tips on critical communication skills for the way things are now hit survivalspeech.com I'm Holland Cook are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless free market non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com.
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. You guys uh, catch my State of the Union address the other night? That was very nice. Hey, this is George Bush? <laughs> I'm afraid so, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that's fantastic to have you listening to the show. <laughs> I wanted you... to run some uh, new ideas I had past you guys. Okay, cool. We'll be your sounding uh, board there, Prez. Ice Cream Day. I love Everybody Ice Cream hate. Day. It's well, awesome. No, we should have Ice Cream Month and different flavors, just like yeah. uh, Baskin Robbins. Every Friday, Americans get free ice cream. Now, Sounds I don't know about where. that. Now, wait a minute. From where, George? Ice listen, Cream Angel's going to bring it down? Yeah. What about this one, guys? Uh, everybody gets a pony in America. <laughs> <laughs> it's very Texan. Presidents have a habit of just getting up and saying what sounds good, and then you don't do anything about it. I mean, really, you're not going to do anything. We all know that. Well, most presidents don't do some of the things they promise. I promise not to do all of those things. <laughs> awesome. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Join us here for Free Talk Live on the radio waves at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in the studio tonight, you've got Ian. Ian Conan. And Mark. If you care about privacy when you're online, you need ProXPN. It's a virtual private network, and they encrypt your online data before it reaches your internet service provider which means your ISP can't snoop on you anymore as soon as you start up with ProXPN. They do it right, offering Open VPN. That's the gold standard of network encryption. They've got apps for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, even Linux support as well. Plus, unlike those other guys, ProXPN keeps no logs of your activities whatsoever. Now ProXPN has even more servers than ever before, giving you greater speed and security. They accept credit card and even Bitcoin. You can get 50% off the regular monthly price for the lifetime of the account when you buy an annual account with code FTL50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live and 50 as in 50% off. It can end up being cheaper per month than a good cup of coffee. You keep hearing about online privacy being infringed. Go to ProXPN.com right now. Use code FTL50 and take back the privacy that is your right. ProXPN.com, code FTL50. Our toll-free number here tonight, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We're talking about court and interesting approaches, unique approaches that have uh, unpredictable results. In this case today, I did not expect to see a, a, a plea deal be taken that involved paying a fine to a charity. That was a new one for me. I had actually requested that at one point. So uh, years ago when I was arrested in Palmer, Massachusetts for recording video in the town hall there, ultimately I won that case thanks to the Massachusetts ACLU uh, who took the case and just did a fantastic job. I ended up getting a settlement from the town of Palmer in that particular case. Um, but what happened was when I was being arraigned, I knew I didn't really want to go back to Palmer. I was willing to take a plea. I've never taken a plea. I don't uh, recommend it. I don't do it. But I was willing to take a plea in the Palmer case just because I don't want to go back to Massachusetts, right? That's the reason why people pay fines and things like that is especially if they're visiting somewhere in some other state. They're emotionally done with it. Just want to pay it and get it over with. In this case, I didn't want to pay them, though. I wasn't willing to give them any money. I told them, look, I'll give 50 bucks to the local food bank if you'll just go ahead and you know drop these charges, and we'll call this a day. How about that? And they didn't take my offer. Mm. I bet they wish they did after they got ruled against. <laughs> yeah. and had that, uh... It ended up costing them $5,000. Yeah. And by the way, I did give the uh, 50 bucks to the local food bank after the fact anyway. Yeah. So, uh, so it's interesting. You know, you don't get if you don't ask. This is an old sales uh, adage. You know, sure. if you don't ask for the sale, you're not going to get the sale. Yeah, you, but but you've got to be reasonable. 
Yeah, some clown was in my store the other the other week and wanted all my DVDs for twenty dollars. It's like, come on, man, <laughs> you got to be reasonable. How many DVDs are we talking about? We're talking about good 20, 30 DVDs. Okay, all but, new new ones. Oh, but asking new. didn't cost him anything. It didn't cost him anything. Right. But but then again, it kind of ruined his chances of yeah of. You know, working on another deal. That's the sure. one thing I, about negotiations you have to be careful of because what you can do is harden your. Um, I, I don't want to call them opponent. Because you don't want don't, them to balk too hard. Yeah, I don't like. I I don't do business with opponents. Okay, mm-hmm. um, I, I do business with people with I customers. like customers and and uh, people I want to serve. So. Uh, you know, basically, if you if you come at me too hard with a negotiation, it's just gonna be like, eh, I don't think this is gonna work out for anybody, and but I don't have to I don't have to work that hard at it, right? Like I've got a national. But this is kind of like program. this is that whole argument where you just walk down the street, you know, shower, shave, walk down the street, and just ask every girl you see uh, whether they'll have sex with you. So it'll and, take a and, while. And, but yeah, someone, it might it might take a while, but you might get lucky that evening. Yes. You might get lucky within the hour. The old story is that this works, but the internet says otherwise. What do you mean by that? Uh, well, apparently people have tried just oh, really? that, and and it's not terribly successful. Hmm. hmm. Well, of course, are are they picking and choosing their video? I imagine moments? they're picking and choosing. Everybody does. Have you seen the same uh, same video idea where they ask the two the girl and the man sit next to each other whether the, w- they ask the guy. Uh, would you have sex with your BFF, your best friend, who's a girl? Mm-hmm. And he's like, hell yeah, well, I'll do. And then they ask the girl <laughs> the same question. And of course, she's sitting right there. And she's like, what? No. No? <laughs> Wait, now, they, did she know what he had said to hit to the question? Are I think that, Yeah, they're sitting right there. Okay. Yeah, in a lot of cases, um, the, the video I saw, the guy and the girl are sitting together, and basically the, they're interviewing um, them, and sometimes they'll ask the guy first, sometimes they'll ask the girl first, but basically, um, you know, from... The guy <laughs> says it, the guy, the guy 99% yes. of the chance, <laughs> yes, yeah. and the girl... It's it's a hundred percent no, and she's acting offended, right? Like that she, was she surprised that her best friend oh, wants yeah. to have sex with her? Oh yeah, like she I don't doesn't think she's know. Terribly surprised. She doesn't know about oh, the she, friend zone. Oh no, she really knows. She's playing surprise. Ah, I see. Yeah, they're the gatekeepers. You know, <laughs> Mark, you're absolutely right. The women's are the gatekeepers, and you know that's that that's a good thing. And if they and, you- and if and if they no, it's a good thing if they would actually play it up. Uh, they could they could conquer so much wrong in the world if they were just to play up their gatekeeper status they could end wars tonight if they stopped know. having you're sex too much credit this was an uh this was actually during the peace movement and i can't remember the name of the organization uh, this is back uh, this is some some time ago um you know like a hundred years ago but the uh, the idea was is that the mothers uh, would make sure that uh, there wouldn't be any more war i think it might, might have been mothers against war or something like that yeah but there's always going to be some girl who wants to jump the bones of a soldier i mean there's these that's the trick of it yeah. they, all, they like the bad boy they like well, the soldier boy they right. like the guy with the uniform on they like the guy with the they badge might be the on gatekeepers they are not a unified gay pe- keepers so <laughs> when they say that they are not all warlike and they're not all they're all against this and that no at the end of the day they're just as barbaric as the dudes, they're just as dog-like as the dudes, and I have no sympathy for them. They're just, all just as mercenary. They, yeah, exactly. Just, uh, they're all a, we're, we're all animals, uh, plain and simple. <laughs> Conan's not getting laid tonight. I don't know where you're going with any of this. <laughs> Toll free, no, your girlfriend doesn't listen, does she? Or does she? I don't know. She wouldn't be caught dead. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she hate. What are you talking about? She hates us. What? All of us. Yeah, we're all political. What does that mean? That means we're all, you know, I mean, she's got I things. I can tell she, you the listenership on this program is 86% male, according to the people who filled out the demographic survey. Is that right? Yeah. Well, anyway, you can join us here. You can tell your court story or whatever's on your mind. Hey, since we're talking about relationships, how about Ashley Madison? We haven't discussed this, uh, this hack that occurred at all. And now it has become even more a, a relevant story because now the hackers who have cracked into this website that is basically a site for cheating – for people who want to yep. cheat on their spouse or lover or whatever. That's what it's for. Now, the data that they stole has been released. I all wonder of it. I wonder how many politicians are in that data list. Yeah, that's well, the thing that's most interesting to me. That's yeah. what I want to see. I don't want to I everything else is just nothing, but the but the politician list, you get know, it out there. You know they're dumb enough to use their own government email address, too, to do this, or at the very least their personal email. They're not smart enough to use some sort of alternative email account. So, in fact, one person even has already gone through the 10 gigabytes 
of data. Oh, God. Uh, and they searched for British government emails <laughs> in that list. So we're not the only ones that had that idea to, to look for the politicians. Uh, hackers claim they stole data from Ashley Madison. The dating site for cheaters rec- uh, recently posted 10 gigabytes of that stolen data, including email addresses, credit card transactions, and even user profiles. This should be very interesting, writes Gizmodo.com. The data can be found on the dark web, and those who have downloaded it say they have already found all kinds of juicy gossip. The hackers themselves, however, don't seem at all miffed about this massive release of purportedly private and possibly damaging information because Ashley Madison's parent company, Avid Life Media, refused the hackers' demands to take down the site they apparently don't think their users deserve privacy. Hackers that have been cheated on by their girlfriends. <laughs> so calling themselves the That's why they're such team. good hackers, Mark, because they got a lot of time they got on their nothing hands. But time. They should have paid more attention to their girlfriend. <laughs> the hackers said, quote, We have explained the fraud, deceit, and stupidity of ALM, that's Avid Life Media, the parent company, and their members. Now everyone gets to see their data. Keep in mind this site is a scam with thousands of fake female profiles. Ooh, all right, so we'll talk more about it. And the rest are hookers. Really? I'm just guessing. 855 450 What woman is going to go sign up for this site that's like, hey, cheat on, yeah. your, <laughs> cheat on your significant other? I mean, I suppose she could be in a relationship, but This I don't is know. Free Talk Live. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now, don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. We use mobile devices right against our bodies every day. But growing scientific evidence has emerged showing serious health risks associated with exposure to EMF radiation emitted from these devices. The solution is Defender Shield, the most effective mobile radiation shielding ever developed. Defender Shield blocks virtually 100% of EMF radiation from cell phones, tablets, and laptops and starts at just $64.99. Buy now at DefenderShield.com. For 10% off, use promo code GCN. DefenderShield.com, the worldwide leader in mobile radiation shielding. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state in back taxes, you know they'll never stop coming after you. With bank levies, wage garnishments, they'll even seize your home or business. The good news? A government program for tax debt forgiveness. It's called the Fresh Start Initiative. I'm Paul Sibley. With U.S. Tax Shield, we can help navigate the new laws, get you protected, and resolve your tax issues permanently. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield now for your free consultation and get a guaranteed quote to resolve your case. Call 800-436-6451. That's 800-436-6451. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733 with you in studio. You've got Ian. And Conan. And Mark. Check out more Conan on his website, blacksheeprising.org. What is it, Conan? What is Black Sheep Rising? Black Sheep Rising is a late-night variety liberty program coming to you every month the last sunday of every month we also do the video so i guess you can call us a vlog two hours of non-stop shenanigans and drops and you name it it's fun stuff it's all coming to you straight here to you from uh, Keene, new hampshire so you might get some choice bits from the area if we don't have enough going on because we're having to go to all the way to manchester to see the you know the local Court news. There's always something going on here <laughs> in uh, in Keene. I mean, Conan, you've got coming up, you're going to be running for political office. Yeah, but, you know, we try to, I don't know how popular those those videos are. The When we, when we go all politics, mm-hmm. I think we might lose people. Yeah, that's a possibility. They want to hear about boobies and tattoos. And boobies are going to be happening Sunday. That's actually uh, the Free the Nipple campaign yeah, happening. We, we we're might- doing... We're doing Topless Tuesday we to show. Be, top- we might be talking about that as well. You right, know? we're uh, we're showing solidarity here in the studio tonight, Conan <laughs> and I. Uh, Mark, you have not participated in Topless Tuesdays over the last. It's really not good for anybody. Couple of weeks. <laughs> uh, and uh, well, the the Free the Nipple campaign. Actually, I posted an article about that over at freekeen.com recently. That's shaping up to be uh, quite the event. Looking forward to uh, to seeing how that transpires. And that's happening, by the way, all across the world. Uh, is the Go Topless Day. It's this Sunday, August 23rd. You can go to gotopless.org. Uh, so go to uh, blacksheeprising.org for more of Conan in video and audio form. You can subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel, both do both. Do both. Do all of the above. Go to the face and go to the Facebook page and because yeah. uh, that's where I put all of the – that's the easiest thing for me. I know that everyone else is all web savvy and, you know, they're doing I don't know, the, man. People spend way too much time on Facebook. I, I have a love hate relationship with Facebook, but uh, I gotta say I have not spent any time on AshleyMadison.com. dot com. Uh-huh. <laughs> and you, if, so we're not gonna find anything out, any curious information in the next no. week or so. All the names get dropped. Nine point seven gigabytes of data has been released, so that drop has happened, Conan. It was posted today. Uh, to the dark web using an Onion address accessible only through the Tor browser, and unfortunately Wired Magazine is not sharing that address with us. Uh, The files appear to include account details and logins for 32 million users of the social networking site. That's a lot of unhappy married folk. Now the thing is, the hackers are saying that there's a bunch of fake accounts. Uh, The data released by the hackers, they uh, included some notes Uh, going along with this here and one of the things that they posted said keep in mind the site is a scam with thousands of fake female profiles Mm. so they wanted uh you know horny married men to come into this website and uh, hand over whatever the subscription fee was so they could then in theory have a hookup with somebody who 
wasn't even a real person. Do you think maybe the hackers, maybe a hacker got hacked off and decided, you know, I'm going to get back at this I'll show site. them. I'm going to show these guys that they're all full of crap. See Ashley Madison fake profile lawsuit. 90 to 95 percent of the actual users of the site are male. Chances are your man signed up on the world's biggest affair site, but never actually had one. He just tried to. If that distinction matters, too bad for those men. They're We're, cheating dirtbags and deserve no such here, discretion. We go right back to the placebo effect. It's all about just having it, and you know, it, maybe it's, there's no substance to it, but it's all in the mind. So who's the real criminal in this case? Is it uh, the hackers for breaking into a private database and revealing a website as essentially fraudulent? Or is it the fraudulent website? I have a really difficult time sort of uh, uh, wrapping my hands around, uh, you know, what is right and what is wrong on the Internet. Mm. So I would generally say hacking somebody's website is wrong. But when you hack somebody's website and find out that they are full of crap and that there's ch bilking their customers, I assume they're bilking. I don't know. I don't know the business model of Ashley Madison. Not my, um, you know, mm -hmm. not my thing, but um, you know, let's let's say they were bilking customers. If you hack a website and find out that a website is bilking its customers, but you had to sort of break an in virtually break and enter to do it, who's right and who's wrong? Uh, it seems to me that if you're, you know, <laughs> that the ends justify the means. If you're uh, the means justify the ends. If you're, uh, uh, you know, seeing, uh, I would the, I would say they're both wrong. Sleazy website. They have both broken. Uh, the law against private property. Yep, that's true. Uh, and uh, but hey, uh, one th committed these are... breaking and entering digitally. Mm -hmm. The other was committing fraud on their customers. Correct. Allegedly. Correct. So and, and and of course, how do you find that out? How do you find out when a big company is doing fraud? The, the only way you'd find it out is if one is, of the employees gave them up. Otherwise, this is why everyone defends Bernie Sanders because we need government to protect us from the from the hooligans. Are you saying Bernie how, Sanders is on the uh, Ashley Madison site? I'm saying he is like this <laughs> argument that. Well, that would be great. Well, I, one I, analysis of the email addresses found in the data dump did find 15,000 of them are .mil or .gov. Good. I want to know more. Yeah. Well, so there you go, Conan. That's the thing. 15,000. On one hand, you're saying, okay, well, this is bad to break and enter, but when you see the data, you're like, ooh, now I want to go and read this this uh, stolen data. Well now, well, now it's public, so someone else broke the law. Yeah, but it's still law. stolen data, right? I mean, should you feel bad well, if you're you know, parsing through this email you list? You know it's on the Internet. And so the Internet, as far as I'm concerned, is public. So if you don't do a good job uh, actually taking care of your uh, subscribers, your members, and keeping their data you know, uh, you know, in, intact, then you, you're essentially you're displaying all of your members on a big billboard. So if you don't do a good job of taking care of them, then you're at, I don't know, you're, you're, you're essentially – displaying all the information for the public to see. Yeah, that's true. You do have to uh, use due diligence here. Uh, following the intrusion last month, the hackers who called themselves the Impact Team demanded that Avid Life Media, the owner of AshleyMadison.com and its companion site Established Men, take down the two sites. EstablishedMen.com promises to connect beautiful young women with rich sugar daddies to fulfill their lifestyle needs. We talked about a uh, site like that years ago on Free Talk Live. I don't remember what it was called, but there was another site Might have out been there. That. No, there was a, there was another. It was a different name, but okay. uh, where these you know young ladies will basically get rich old guys to you know pony up some big cash for them in order for them to sort of have them on the side. It's an interesting pitch. The hackers didn't target their other website, Cougar Life, a sister <laughs> site run by the same company, ALM, that promises to connect older women with younger men. The hackers wrote in their statement, quote, Avid Maybe that Life... that one was legit. Uh, yeah, that, that sounds like a legit site. Like, I don't it know might what's actually legit work. and what's not. I frankly couldn't, couldn't tell you. Avid Life Media has been instructed, this from the hackers in, a, in their statement following the breach, quote, Avid Life Media has been instructed to take Ashley Madison and establish men offline permanently in all forms, or we will release all customer records, including profiles with all customers' secret sexual fantasies and matching credit card transactions, real names and addresses, and employee documents and emails. <laughs> and they did, because this these guys didn't take down their site. Wow. What would you have done if you were uh, running? Let's let's say that the site wasn't a fraud, and as they're alleging that it is. And you were running this website, and these hackers they're, are demanding you take your site down. They're con artists. They don't care. They don't care about their members. 
it's like, all right, we we had a good couple of years run. We made a lot of money. We got found out. Now it's time to pack up the bags and maybe try something new in a couple of years. I mean, they don't care about their people. It's it's not a it's not a business that was ever going to last. Well, mm-hmm. any business could have something like this happen. I mean, I don't know that Free Talk Lives ever had anybody say, "Take your site down, or we'll take you down." Uh, but I w- wouldn't surprise me in the least if somebody would uh, you know send an email like that at some point. How are you supposed to take something like that even seriously? Hmm. How are you supposed yeah, it's to? Yeah, like it's like a bomb threat. I mean, well, is if it... you know they've gotten your uh, ten gigabytes of data, that could oh, be serious. So once they have the data, then you're supposed to take it down. I yeah, guess. they they threaten them after they stole I the got data. It. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. So the it was, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry if I wasn't there. clear. The idea was, look, we got your data. Now look, you take the site down, or we're releasing it. So well, they well, could have protected their customers if the hackers honored their word and didn't release the data anyway. After the sites were taken down, the hackers did. Uh, I think I'd take down the site. They did take issue with what they consider ALM's fraudulent business practices. Despite promising customers to delete their user data from the site for a $19 fee, the company actually retained the data on ALM servers, said the hackers. Quote, too bad for those men. They're cheating dirtbags and deserve no such discretion. Too bad for ALM. You promised secrecy, but you didn't deliver. So ALM said, you know, give us 20 bucks, we'll take your information off. Blackmail. They kept it in a database. Absolute blackmailers. Yeah, screw these guys. And now all of that information is available to you on the dark web. I don't have the address for it, though, so you have to look around for it. We'll see you tomorrow night online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Check out Conan at blacksheeprising.org. More Free Talk Live coming up tomorrow. This message is for home intruders, the cowards who break into people's homes to steal their hard-earned property, criminals who shatter lives and rob people of their privacy and security. Listen very carefully. We're the home security experts at LiveWatch, and we're taking you down. Because we're letting everyone try our newest home security system for one full year in their home. To take advantage of this amazing offer, call now, 1-800-670-9259. LiveWatch has been helping protect homes for years, and we've learned the secrets that intruders like you don't want people to know. Criminals, it's time for you to be afraid, because every person who calls will be protected against cowards like you. To the criminals listening, we're taking you down. To those who want to help protect their homes, call the security experts to try the LiveWatch security system. There are no long-term contracts, and if you're not completely satisfied, you can cancel at any time. Try LiveWatch now by calling 1-800-670-9259. That's 1-800-670-9259. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. Rebel Love Show is next, live after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, August 18th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.09 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,118 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $258. Antiwar.com reports the governor of the southern Yemeni port city of Aden, currently occupied by the pro-Saudi forces of the government in exile of Yemen, said the city will be declared the nation's official capital for the next five years and will be the focus of all reconstruction in the country in that period. Aden was the capital city of South Yemen through 1990 when the territory was annexed by North Yemen and has been the center of an active secessionist movement in recent years. The decision to make this the national 
national capital, even on a temporary basis, could set up a conflict with that movement. The more immediate concern, however, is whether this suggests the pro-Saudi faction envisions the war lasting so long they need a new capital for half a decade. The capital of Sana'a is under control of the Shiite Houthi movement and has been under siege by Saudi airstrikes for months. Officials from the pro-Saudi faction had suggested they believe the momentum is theirs and that they can take back the rest of the country in short order. If that was really the case, however, they probably would not be looking to replace Sana'a with a new capital for several years to come. In Survivor Max by Davi Barker, 11-year-old Max must survive the zombie apocalypse alone in New Hampshire. Slow-moving and non-thinking, the lame brains swarm his home searching for living flesh. Max must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to plan his escape, but first he must prove that he's too smart to die. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook and Amazon or read Chapter 1 free at SurvivorMax.com. UPI reports the National Labor Relations Board on Monday blocked Northwestern University football players from becoming the first union of college athletes. The board did not rule on whether athletes should be considered employees of the school who have the right to unionize, instead citing the fact that labor law only allows the board to rule on private sector workplaces. The board said in the ruling statement, the board held that asserting jurisdiction over a single team would not promote stability and labor relations across the league. National College Players Association Executive Director Ramogi Huma filed a petition in 2014 with the board along with cards signed by an undisclosed number of players indicating they wished to be represented by the union. Huma, who played football at UCLA and helped form the NCPA in 2001, said the unionization movement had the support of the United Steelworkers Union. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports, the Internal Revenue Service said Monday a hacking attack into one of the computer's databases revealed in May was much more extensive than previously thought, with nearly three times as many taxpayers hit by data theft. The IRS said in late May the tax return information of about 114,000 U.S. taxpayers had been illegally accessed by cyber criminals over the preceding four months, with another 111,000 unsuccessful attempts made. The new review has identified 220. 20,000 additional incidents where data was breached. The tax collection agency said it identified another 170,000 suspected failed attempts by third parties to gain access to taxpayer data. The agency said in a statement, the IRS believes some of this information may have been gathered for potentially filing fraudulent tax returns during the upcoming 2016 filing season. It added that it will soon begin mailing letters in the next few days to the taxpayers whose accounts may have been accessed, offering them free credit money monitoring, and a new personal identification number to verify the authenticity of next year's tax returns. In May, the agency said that as a result of the breach, some 15,000 fraudulent returns were processed in the 2015 tax filing season, likely resulting in refunds of less than $50 million. An IRS official said the agency was reviewing whether the number of fraudulent returns had grown due to more extensive data breaches, but that requires a manual review of the individual returns. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A prison reform group issued a disturbing new study this week calling conditions in women's correctional facilities deplorably unsexy. The report contends that women's prisons are bleak, dangerous environments with shockingly few soapy showers and erotically 